vocht op de way big time. Het, het zocht dan nog, ja, het is lekker vocht in de hoofd, lekker vocht in de stok. Dus om die ambulance came out, als er op zijn meegaan, dan weet in de street. Ah, voor je goede way out, after that, dat was daar verstand te go. Just log een paar, nou, even een zorg, een zuur, wie je kreeg, een English title, British title, European title. One every and haven't you just, you know what I mean? My goal is in life to be a world champion. On the surface for me, but my real goal was for my dad to stop taking heroin, to be clean. Ladies and gentlemen, five fans and podcast enthusiasts, it's an honor to have True Legend join us in the studio today with 32 victories and a world title to his name. His dedication, skill and unwavering determination have earned him a place amongst the elite. So without further ado, please join us as he tells his story and gives us an insight into the life of James Dickens. Psalms 1441, David, praise be to the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, my shield, in whom I take refuge, who subdues people under me. Oh Lord, what is man that you care for him, the son of man, you think of him? How did you come to find that passage? And what does it mean to you? To me, when I found God, that my life changed when I found God. Um, I know, uh, for, for many people who I know, who grow up with me, probably sounds a bit mad this, and uh, you know, it's like, a, you see like Christians or Catholics as lunatics, don't you? Every, I know like, people who go to church, you always lost his marbles and all that, but... I mean, life changed when, when I met God. I was always doing what I was doing, but there was, there was a hole there. When I started finding my faith and with the Lord and reading my Bible, that that's the health. Yeah. Yeah, blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains me on the floor, my fingers for battle. That's Psalm 441. I don't just that just the one part that for me is um, a massive part of like the strength I ask for the Lord every day. Um, give me the strength to do what I've got to do. Say that prayer every morning, and um, and He does, you know, fills me. I know you're a religious man. What what drove you to find religion, Jazz? How how did that come to be? What made you go to church? What what was the calling? What what was the the catalyst for you to become a, a practicing Christian? Odd really, because do you go to a Catholic school growing up? Yeah. In Liverpool, a lot of people go to a Catholic school, we know the hymns and we know the uh, the words behind the, the poems, the the hymns and stuff like that. But we don't actually know what it actually means. You know what I mean, how can you how can you be an eight year old child and ex- explain what, what God is? Three parts: He's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. It's three parts. Um, it makes no sense to a child, does it? I have to explain to my own kids, and they say, "Well, well, if Jesus is Jesus God and is God Jesus, and what's the Holy Spirit?" So it's confusing for the kids. Why I knew none of it as a child, but. Um, I did feel something when I was in, in church as a kid um, with the school. So sure my only not. experience in, in church was with, with the school. Um, but I was naughty at the same time. I remember going to the priest one time and saying, any jam for a bread, Father? No one gives you bread. <laughs> Imagine that a kid, you know what I mean? The father tried his best not to laugh, but he, he had to because he probably never heard that before, you know what I mean? But that was the type of kid I was. And when I was hanging around with my mates, me being a midnight mass, I don't know why I was in a midnight mass, I must have been about nine. And I'm and now when you giggle, giggling, you're laughing that hard, and he's just coming out your nose and your ears, and you can't keep it in. And um, an old woman grabbed me and said, Hey, you don't you ever come back in this? This is God's house, you're not welcome here. And as a kid, that's like damaging, isn't it? Yeah. If, you, if you're going to be <laughs> finding your, find your way in religion, <laughs> so <laughs> telling me I'm not welcome. So he always like rejected it. Uh, and I thought, me, I thought of what people probably think of me now. You're around the bend, you, what, what, what do you get out of that? You know what I mean? I can kind of relate to what you're saying, right? Because I went to a Catholic school and every Saturday night, my nan, she used to take me and our Lord to church, right? When we today in St. Brendan's, lad, there was a there was Saturday night mass, six o'clock or Sunday morning, ten. Now me and Laura today, my nan's that's my sister, every Saturday night, but we'd always go to church with the right. But we'd mess around sometimes. Yeah. So <laughs> when it'd be like um, you know, peace be with you or the past the um the 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 the, the offer three round and you put your money in the box and that lad yeah we'd like be laughing and joking and we'd be giggling and we'd be messing and it'd be every week it'd be 
you can't come here <laughs> next Saturday. No, I'm not bringing you again. You know what I mean? And like, oh, no, 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 man, we'll be good. We'll be good. This is next Saturday. We get in there again, lad, and it'll roll again. And we'd be into lighting our candles at the end and, you know, saying our prayers. But, like, we were quite religious growing up as kids, me and Laura. I don't think we fully understood it. But we didn't. It did resonate with me, like with my soul. Like it was somewhere for me to go, if you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm interested. In, I'm interested in asking you. Um, and I've lost my way with religion as I've got older. I think like as me nan, when my nan died and stuff like that, and I started getting a little bit older, I just sort of like grew out of it. But it was like as as kids, it was something like that we were always around. And my kids are Catholic now, and like they all go to Catholic schools and stuff like that, and. Some people do find um, a place with God, don't they? You know what I yeah. mean? It's a place of safety. It's a place of, of not security, but you know what I'm saying? I look for yeah. jazz. It's, a, it, it's, it's somewhere for you to turn. Yeah. Is that what it is for Definitely, you? Definitely, yeah. I never, but like, like, the original question was what, what brought you back at the age of 18, I was. Um, I had a conversation not long ago with Tommy Belly when he told me that. He, he asked, I asked him why he couldn't see and he asked me why I could see why we and we both had the same reasoning. He'd seen so much bad in the world, he can't believe there's a God. And I said, I've seen so much bad in the world, I, I can't believe there isn't a God for me to be where I am and to still have the life that I've got and not to be bitten and stuff like that. Does that make sense? Perspective. And, and I've seen his point and he's seen my point. And it was when my half got clean from um, heroin after 18 years. And growing up in that lifestyle with me, man, and dad, and then going to rehab, so like, my goals in life were to be a world champion. On the surface, for me, but my real goal was for my dad to stop taking heroin, to be clean, you know what I mean? And to see my alpha going to church when he asked me to go, I didn't want to go to, go to church because I was probably the same as Bowman at the time and I just didn't believe in nothing because I'd seen so much bad. And I only went because I'd seen how much... I'd seen it was a medical for them to be actual... Actually, like, no abusing himself on this drug that, you know, often grabs you around the neck and tells you what to do and when to do it, you know what I mean? So I went a bit longer than when I got this feeling. Once again, that child of childlike feeling I got when I was a kid, it came back to me after missing it for so many years and um, I went back on my own, on the sly, so to think, you know what I mean? I was just, um, <laughs> it was like I was sneaking there, you know what I mean? So when I started to find... Do you think it way, was a place of hope for you, Jazz? Because, like, of what you'd been through with your dad and, and your mum, you can touch on your childhood and growing up a little bit in a minute. But with, because of that, you've always, like, longed for that, for that family unit, for that place, for that, for that, for that home, for that security. For the, and now there's an opportunity for that. There's a chance for that. And it's sort of come through that channel. So it's like, there's hope for me. Do you think hope yeah. drove you there? Well, I don't know. It's like... Well, Ever Evertonians, why do we go to this? You know what I mean? We're chosen. I was just chosen. <laughs> I always thought you can fight him, and you, I know why you can fight because you're a fucking Evertonian. You're that just <laughs> thought on a club like that. <laughs> it was like, what do you say? I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you why. The truth is, I, I believe it's God's grace in this game. He's chosen me to to believe in him. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm blessed because I had an experience when I was um, about a year or two into into on my way with the Lord and I had an experience where I seen I was just seen a, like a light thing what, what he showed me and like a different dimension so I think sound like I'm off me head but I don't, don't want to sound like I'm on the bend but I had an experience so I've got a little bit more evidence than, than the normal person you know what I mean I went on no substance I went high I seen what I seen and, the, and I'm blessed from the Lord that I've got the evidence so in a way that it's like I don't have although I have been given evidence from the Lord I just don't have the excuses not to believe in the Lord because I've seen what I've seen. So, you know, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to get, get to walk in this path and believe in... in Do you use those gardens as fear for every day? Do you know yeah. in a time where yeah. you're feeling low or at a time you're ever feeling down or when you face hardship or struggle or, or adversity? Yeah, well... Where Does that I? reinforce your self-belief in your strength? No, no, where I am now in my life is that I have to just remember to keep on taking the Lord when things are going well because we're all praying when we're on our knees, aren't we? When, when, life, when yeah. life's kicking us down. And, and Everyone will say, oh, help me now, help me now. Yeah, yeah. Gotta... I would say the most religious place in the world is a football stadium when you're 1-0 down. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're nine rounds down, you're going off in ten rounds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're saying prayers down, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> you were born in April 1991 in Mill Road Hospital. Tell me about your earliest memories. <laughs> I don't remember that far back. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the actual day. Um, <laughs> earliest memories. Um, just As a child growing up, where was you from? Um, a place called Holy Cross, the bottom of Vauxhall Road, city centre, just the closest um, estate outside of the city centre. So it was the city centre really. Like up this way where I am now, I'd never come. I've been to London at the age of 16. I've been up to London more times than I've been to Old Swan. <laughs> Wow, it's yeah. mad because like it's a different end of the city and not in it as well yeah it's because it, you're from town you think it's the centre of the world you know what I mean so the city centre um, I had a good good community um, we had a school I had about nine nine or ten lads my age around my area it was in my class we had a football team in the, in the school and we all, also played for the Byron which was the weekend team together so we had a great football, football team we had a good con- you know, chemistry between us, stuff like that. We all played out, knocked around together after school. Um, I had an auntie in the same street as me. I had two aunties in the same street as me. Um, one from dad's side, one from mum's side. My auntie Linda from my mum's side looked after me as well. She's like a second mother. Um, I had cousins who were like brothers. And, and cousins who were like sisters in the same street. So, yeah, very lucky. Was you an only child, Jazz? Yeah. No brothers and sisters? Yeah, only child, yeah. What was you like with the ball at your feet? I could do both feet. I'm left footed. Um, I was okay. Probably we were too small. Probably fairest I went was when the thirteens. I think it was. But I was I was small, so I was always over age. I was over age, so I played the year <laughs> over age. Back then, you could do that, couldn't you? I was I was a ringer. I get trials every now and again. Um, Schoolboys, remember the Blackburn? Um, not Black Black Blackburn. Went to Blackburn. Scored two in the game, but when I got there, I had to. Um, Tell them I was a year older, you know what I mean? But it was oh. weird turning up and saying, Yeah. Kind of going playing the, in the trial game, a year older score too. Didn't didn't get picked to follow through. But, um, Man, Man City scout one time, we were in Pontins. You used to be after Summer League. You used to have the oh, Summer Leagues. Yeah. Summer Leagues were brilliant to go to Pontins with the football team. Um, Saturday League teams and um, have a tournament and stuff like that. We, we were a good little team. Um, we couldn't go there, my Alfred didn't drive, so we had to just. Swear that one, <laughs> um, but then the the, the the school football team, my uncle was the um, the he came in. He was the PE teacher, so he was the, also the football manager for weekend, and he was the school team manager. And we, we got to the mayor's side, got up in the final, we won in Goodison, won that with with the same same team. So yeah, but the football was great memory for me until I was about thirteen, fourteen, and just as soon as I found boxing. Just, just was that all you wanted to do growing up? Did you want to, did you, did you want to be a footballer, Jazz? At that time, before you found boxing, was football you like your first? All love to I do? wanted was football. Sticker boots, remember stickers? I knew every play in the league, not because I watched the telly. We never had a sky, not like that. But just yeah. like the, the, the sticker books, books collecting yeah. them and that. Yeah. Remember them? Um, that was before Pokemon cards were in it. You do, you, you do well to fill a full book as well, wouldn't yeah. you? It was yeah. hard work because yeah. you keep getting swaps and. Yeah. Been off, but the shinies as well. Oh, you had a box of shine, a pack of shinies, lad. You were saying yeah. you don't really see that stuff now, do you? My lad's collecting them now, lad. I've is got them on them because the stickers have come back. The cards I weren't really in, so you can put them anywhere in the book. But the stickers, they've got yeah. um, they've got the place for them, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that, and it's, it took me back. I was like a big kid sitting on the landing with them for ages, a few weeks ago, peeling them all up and that, you know what I mean? <laughs> but then I remembered it was a fucking, it was a painstaking job, you know, when you're trying to find yeah. them all and you're peeling them all and all that. Yeah. But it's tough, it's Love me back, that bit of nostalgia. The numbers on the back. Yeah, probably yeah. most kids probably don't even know what that is now, do they? No, because it's a different world now. That they're all on a fucking computer and all on iPads and stuff like that and yeah. YouTube and that. I was thinking that myself. I was playing. Went, oh my god! No, when you realise, am I getting old? I'm, I'm getting on now. I went to get my lad a PlayStation. The other day, and the woman, and she was saying, "Love, what's the difference between that one and that one there?" And she went, "Well, that one, you, you put the games in it, and that one's got no games in it." Yeah. So, but what, what, where's the games? You know what I mean? <laughs> You <laughs> are getting. <laughs> I mean, where's the where's what you do? Where's the games? You know, obviously online. Yeah, everything's and downloaded, uh, isn't it? Yeah, yeah so I have. Um, do you want to touch on your childhood a little bit? What it was like growing up with your mum and dad and stuff like that? Would you touch on that with us, Jazz? Yeah, I'm really old there. Yeah, I'm happy to talk about it because I believe it's, um, it's helpful for a lot of people. It's amazing, in the man situation. you are today as well. Thank you, yeah, man. Thank you. No, but my man's are done a good job, you know what I mean? Everything that I've done good in my life, I put it down to my man's are. Everything that I've done bad in my life, I probably put it down to myself, you know what I mean? I had two, two pe- people who who raised me properly with manners and showed me respect. Um, no, do as I say, not as I do, sort of thing. That that was 
sort of the motto, without they didn't have to say it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they, they had addictions, and it it was what it did was. Did you know that from an early age, Jazz? Could you feel that, or did you just know something <coughs> not fucking right? Or with addiction? Yeah. Well, the way in the day that I went in it, it was it was like the there was the three of us. You know what I mean? When I say us, I weren't taking no substance, but I'm around it every single day. I didn't know that. Well, I did know that weren't normal because I had my auntie around the corner and her house was different, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, so I could well, talk. Your auntie sort of a saviour for you? Yeah. In that sense. Not like. half, yeah. Another mother. Yeah. Somewhere for you to go, someone to come find in, somewhat, you know what yeah. I mean? And when I said, when I, when I get older, I want to have, like, you know, if you have a relationship with a woman or kids, I want it to be like her and her partner and their kids, you know what I mean? Yeah. That was the role model. Yeah. That was the that was the, the prototype for what you wanted yeah. to do. And I was so lucky. Bigger. So lucky I had that because if I didn't see that, then I don't know what. Where you, know. you would have turned yeah. or what you would have done because without yeah. that being there, you were just a lost yeah. kid. Yeah, it was. I, I, well, it, it's mad because you you would think if like you, you brought up to addiction and stuff like that, you're not loved and stuff like that. That's what people associate, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. a lot of times it is, unfortunately, but that weren't the case. You were still loved, but they're just lost. And it's yeah. two parents who love the bones of me and the great attention of both parents. Um, mad because a lot of kids have got all the other things and the love part's not missing. That's missing, the love, you know what I mean, from from a lot of houses or uh, maybe just the affections missing from, from parents and stuff like that. What was missing? Uh, maybe I just, just shame around the addiction and stuff like that, you know what I mean? So... I, I, I'm happy to talk about it now. You know Did I mean? people in the area know that your mum and dad and that they, like they 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 were they were addicted to heroin and stuff like that? You know what I mean? Was to that side of things, Jazz? Well, there's no way they could not see it. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it, yeah, <laughs> I, I'd be surprised if they never. <laughs> <laughs> but, Do you know, like um, as a child or with it in addiction, I'm talking for all the kids who are in a situation. You think the whole world knows about it? Someone could be looking at you and you're just assuming because of your shame, they're thinking that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So they live in that. So what, they sh what I'm getting at here is they shouldn't think that. When you get older, you realise. It weighing on you. Yeah, so paranoid, the shame and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So you just assume the old whale knows about it. Does that make sense? 100%, yeah, lad, because you know they're all looking in and you feel like they're looking in on you, but they're not. And you're probably thinking, you know, they'd be like, oh, that poor lad and whatever, and he probably are, but that's just like... It's, it's living with you, it's there with you. Yeah. But you say that, Paul, lad, and that simply you hate it, lad, I hate it. Yeah, you know, yeah, because you don't want that, you just want... Yeah. Do you know the most successful people in the world, Josh, yeah? All come from my background, you know, lad. Like, adv not everybody, but a lot of them come from adversity at a young age because that's what reinforces you and that's what builds the person, the character. Like, yes. to, to get anything worth having, you need to have, like, resilience, you need to have determination, yes. you need to have you need to have backbone, you need to be able to stand on your own two feet and stuff like that. Yeah. And people who come from, like, more well-to-do backgrounds or more structured family homes, a lot of stuff's done for them. Uh, and the yeah. baby, the little bit and stuff like that. Yeah. And when it comes to standing in the real world on their own two feet, yeah. the ten years behind a man like you, yeah. because you, you would have been street from an early yeah. age. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, out with the boys. I was sort of saying for it mentally, if that makes and physically, me after the same, me and now physically, because he, he also all all love that he couldn't fight his own his own demons. He prepared me for what for maybe yours. we knew what was to come or would have come. You know what I mean? To stand up for myself and stuff like that because. In a situation, kids are brutal, and they can be the victim, you know, so easily. The kids are just brutal, you know what I mean? It's like, it's school's cruel, isn't it, and um, all that? Yeah, and when I started getting into boxing, day 13, um, no, I'm not proud to say it at all, but you're saying about, like, some of the kids who haven't got the, the mental resilience and stuff like that, I used to, like, sort of feed on the, I used to feed on them, and that, that, that for me was me releasing my pain. And it's sad to say, but it was on to them, you know. And I could just see it. I could just see I could see a kid walking through the street and I look at him and I know your man's are on the gear or your man's are on the gear. I can tell by the shame, the look on your face, you're like me, you know what I mean? But when I used to fight these other kids, I used to maybe be resentful and I think you're fucking getting you're it. Getting it. Yeah. Sad to say, but, but that, that was my life. <clears throat> and you'd be trying the things out on them what you were working on in the gym. Yeah. But as well, Jazz, being in Liverpool, where we're from, it's rough. Growing up, it's rough. And, you know, what are you now? Five, 
Bare have en god dag. Nå, nå, vi skal få lidt af det nu for det små lidt. Nå, for det. Obviously, growing up, if you're small, you know what I mean. You you from the city, you haven't got yeah. much gardens, much. Your life could have been hell. So it's like either stand up and be counted, and you'd have to be able to be be able to look after yourself, or you're gonna have a terrible time. Especially yeah. living on the back of Scotty Road, lad. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's um, it's yeah. not it, it's not the calmest places to live, is it? You know what I mean? Brutal, brutal, it's fucking brutal. But it's it's strange because it was like it was preparing you for the person you were going yeah. to become. So many situations that have, have come as a professional boxer. So many situations have happened for me now, and realised that I was getting prepared for that all throughout these years. I was don't taking my strides. I see sometimes people get get hit up on the on the occasion and stuff like that. I just think, fuck you, fuck your occasion. You know what I mean, <laughs> fucking like, <laughs> like that fucking. What's his name? Bane. I was born in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> I just think, fuck you, fuck your occasion. Some fights I go into, and I think, not not about the occasion. I'm just gonna fight you like like I am from Scotty Road. You know what I mean? What's your tactics? <laughs> like I'm fucking from Scotty Road. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need tactics? to know. Like you just been fucking staring at me bed. That's my tactics. <laughs> uh, you're a character, aren't you, Jazz? I've seen you rough and off, messing around at the press conferences and all that. I seen one. I think it was with Delamini, and he said, um, "I'm going to knock you out, Jazz, and I'm going to knock you out." And you went. Uh, I was just about to welcome you to Liverpool, but you're going home with the fucking bandage after now, you know? I was that. I, I, as you told, I was preparing my speech to say, oh, you know, welcome me and all that, don't you cheeky bastard. <laughs> you get it. You speak your mind, no, don't you? I love that. Um, okay. You're having an incredible boxing career. There isn't much you haven't seen, don't know one. Your pro career spanned across 13 years, made up of 37 fights, 32 wins and 5 losses. But we'll touch on that later in the podcast. But I'd like to talk here about to hear about the early days and how you find your life find your lifelong passion. Where did it all start? Boxing. Mm. Like I said before, football was everything to me. I had the same passion for football as I did for boxing. <laughs> and me could me um I had a fight after school one time. And uh, my half said to me, go to the boxing gym and I was I will go to the gym. I went with my cousin, my cousin being boxing for five years, I Joseph. He'd been fighting for the Sully for five years, so I went down to Sully with him on the day, um, the first day. One week later, he had me, me medical, and then three weeks later, he had me first line, fight line. Wow. Up. And then um, it's, it's fast, isn't it? At the age of 13. Yeah. Normally you're waiting six months yeah. at least to even be sure to like yeah. lock that. And the that. Sully is not the type of gym to just throw kids in because they've, they've got that many good fighters, talent over the course. It's a well, it's a, it's a well established gym, so they don't have to do that. You, know what I mean? you just don't get that rest on unless you deserve it. Like, yeah. It's as simple as that. If you if you're turning up every session, if you're not good enough, you're not going out to box. If you get to wear that vest in there, you can fight, you can box. Yeah, and and at the first fight when Lidland it was, and uh, the, the opponent something happened, the fight never happened. I think he must have been too heavy or I was too heavy or something. I don't know what it was, and. Um, then a week later, they got me another fight and we had my first fight in the doctors, not the doctors, the um, old park ballrooms. I um, had my first fight in there and I um, never looked back since, but I didn't know what I it was. I much sparring building up to that, Jazz, because obviously you've just rolled in the gym and medical in a few but weeks. I remember, you're only, you're only in the gym three days a week, so mm-hmm. four, so maybe four or five spars, maybe. maybe what six. was it like when you first got in there and got a pair of gloves on when you well, were actually in the ring? And well, I, I, I thought it was just like... The only thing I could re- relate it to was a street fight. That I remember looking at me, the, my opponent, and I remember thinking, just this, just this thing, this, this is what's gonna have to be because I don't know any other way right now. Does that make sense? So yeah. I'm just gonna go for another fight because you used to fight a lot as a kid on the, on the street and stuff like that. So I just, could you fight already, Jazza? Did you? Did, could yeah, you? I must have been able to because there's no way a month in I can box. You know what I mean? No. Yeah, you I'm must being, have just yeah. been naturally been able to fight. Yeah, if let's hope me able to like you know do pads and boxing and stuff in the house and stuff like that and press ups. That's just all you say, just do press ups, press ups, press ups. Do you quite natural? Yeah, I could do fifty press ups days, like five, five, six, something like that. I was um, must have been five years old in this in his mate's house, um, no only Max's house. It's basically it's a um, you know, like a clear house or whatever, everyone else or something like that. But then yeah. me out for me out for this day. He's doing what he's got to do and he went, show no only lad, you can do fifty press ups. So I remember doing fifty but I'm getting forty five, forty eight and I like stuck in the arms are shaking. And um, I was so young after I finished, I remember lying on the fellas carpet, 
burned out and the fella clapping and that was the first time I ever got applauded for work. That was the first time I seen, oh, if you do this, people from the outside, this thing that me and my alpha are doing in the house, people like that from the outside, does that make sense? So boxing to me when you're fighting in the, in the crowd, so if I'm, I'm, if I'm fighting on big stadiums, stuff like that, live on television now, I'm not thinking about the telly, I'm thinking about Noni Max Flat, does that make sense? So that's why I think, fuck, what, fuck you, 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 you show, I'm thinking about me and my alpha and Noni Max Flat. It was pride, like that was it. Dave, Dave, Dave gave you something and it's made you feel proud where you're like, wow, yeah, yeah they, they like, they believed in me, they, yeah. they, they you felt that, yeah. it's a buzz, isn't it? Does and it? I've copped on, it's, they appreciate what me and my alpha are working on, you know what I mean? Although, although people from the outside look at us and think we've got a foothold, we have, we've got a lot, we've got a lot to give, you know, and it's just me and him working at it and hard work will get you that, get you that applause, you know what I mean? Hard work will get you anywhere, there's no hard work that, 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 that ever goes to waste, you know? Ever, yeah, whether yeah. that's brushing the yeah. floor, lad, whether that's doing a run that no one sees, or whatever. If I always yeah, I believe, believe that. if you work hard, mate, you yeah. it's it, 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 the only good things can come from yeah. hard work. Yeah. Um, Nori Mach, man, shout out to Nori Mach, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nori, it's family, two brothers, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so you had your first fight, and from there. Did you just know straight away, Jazz? Like this is for me. This, this is what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Well, but I turned around and as a, as a, he got he won the kid won, and I looked around. I knew where my man and my auntie was sitting, and I looked around as as he got his arm raised, and I looked around to to say, "Wow, look at that!" Now, when you get off a ride as a kid, you're scared going on. You get off the ride and you can. Wow, you I need to get back go on. Another go. Yeah. So I looked around to look at my man, and say, "What? This is me now." And I seen my auntie's face just shouting, fuck off. <laughs> she thought it wouldn't do me. <laughs> never forget that. <laughs> yeah. Do you but know I, when you were getting in there? I got, got out happy. When you were getting in there, Jazz, were you scared? I don't remember. Getting, well, I, I remember a little bit of getting in. I remember the, um, I don't remember much. I just remember being covering up. And what I didn't know how to do was protect myself. So I remember um, I couldn't punch back as he was um, letting go. I remember being a bit frozen. Only for like split seconds. Yeah. This must have happened three, 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 five second combinations in a fight. I don't think that's what won him. His work rate, he won the fight. And um, I remember thinking, do I wait for him to stop? Didn't or, know. Or you weren't trying to I catch shots. I didn't know how to box at this point. Just you just to fight. fight. Yeah. And you didn't want to troll the same time either. Because as well, it's different, isn't it? You're not fighting a kid in the street. They can punch as well. Yeah. It, it's different. Like, people don't understand that. Yeah. who have never boxed. Yeah. It, the, the, you can fight, but so can he. Yeah. Uh, and so the gloves, gloves are so big at that age, yeah, Andy. Yeah, it's like, like pillars, but they'll give you fucking concussion. Like, <laughs> big head, like, <laughs> like your head's in a washing machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how long were you at the Sholly for? At that point, probably 12, two or three years. It was maybe two seasons. Golden Gloves next. Yeah, I, when uh, me coached the Sholly with Dave Tonks. Um, Paul Lawson, Jimmy Keller. Yeah, yeah. Was he yeah. was there then. Paul Lawson. Paul Lawson's still there. Paul Lawson cornered me with David Burke and that, yeah. yeah. Paul but, Lawson, what a, what a fella. Good. good fella. I was blessed because Paul Lawson was an Olympian as well. The two of them both went to the Olympics and the two of them done my corner. And I was thinking, yeah, fucking hell, where, where would you get it? You know what I mean? Yeah, all well, around the world. But Paul Lawson was that much of a humble fella. I had no idea he was even a boxer. At that yeah, time, you you I didn't know he was When you look at Olympian. Paul, he doesn't look like that anyway, does Crazy. he? You know what I mean? Lovely fella. Yeah, he is. I seen him a couple of, about two months ago in the carvery with my lad, Jared, and I was saying to him, hey, Jared, do you know him? <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at me eating his turkey, probably thinking, what are you doing about that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, that's Paul Lawson. That's what it was. Paul Lawson, Dave Tonks. Jimmy Carroll, Terry Kinney. Um, I hate doing this because you miss people. It's not about naming people. Mean. You miss people, you feel bad. Was Berkey there? At the time, no, this time, no, Becky was a boxer at this boxing, time. Boxing, yeah. yeah, was Terry boxing? Terry was Paul a Edwards, Terry, Paul Eddy, Nathan Brough, Lee Siner, some team that David era Price. was some team. David Price, yeah. Brough, I've seen obviously, I've been in the gym and seen pictures, and I've just been looking, thinking, gee, imagine like if you were coming down to spa from another club or something like that, you're going on, don't you, Fry? Only for I was there. I'm probably missing people. I remember for little Danny Angus, Dave McCollins. So I used to watch these. I used to finish my session and then try and stick around to the watching. End. Yeah, and Tony Channel used to say, "Haven't you got a fucking home to go to?" <laughs> oh, no God. fucking house. <laughs> no, I'd rather be here. Yeah. Uh. Um, so I used to sit by the um. The other people back then I remember the other piranha tank. 
Ja, dat is een goed type aan, is het? Don't remember it. No, dus je dan gaan over, niet zo, like, toe, weer warm in. Je hebt put je vingers in. What would he call? But he do four fighters, or do a chef, or I don't need to know that, no. Yeah. They wonder know what yeah. they were called. Ah, that's the last girl and then she wanna see him. What were them yeah. fucking pranas called and that's on help. So no why it sticks out me, but it sticks. Pranas, there used yeah. to be a big Tyson poster on the wall at the back as well, if I remember rightly years ago. It was a big picture was of the Tyson, yeah, in on, on the wall in there. There was yeah. a picture of John Conti I seen that on my first day with the yeah. WBC title. And I said, I want to be that. I want to do that. That cabinet's so day. prestigious as well. When you yeah. walk in the trolley on the right hand side, there's a big glass cabinet as you walk in the door by the changing rooms. Yeah. And I was saying to Kate Wiggins, the amount of times I've stood and stared at that cabinet. And like, he, yeah. he obviously won an ABA title last year. And we had him on. And I said to him, like, there's better names than you have been in that gym. And I've never made it in that fucking cabinet, lad. That, so. Yeah. You know, it's a massive achievement just in itself. And yeah. if you get in there, you sort of cement it in local boxing history forever because it's a it's 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 a serious cabinet in it, lad. Yeah, I think it's good for, for gyms to sh- to showcase what they've got. Like the yeah. ones that are the walls on it. The yeah, wall. they have all the, the vests on the wall as well. Do you know what I mean? In the yeah. trolley and that when yeah. you when you're in there, and Mulholland's got a vest on there. Berkey's got a, his world WB, title shorts on there and all that. WB the, world title. Yeah. Was that Teddy's or Berkey's? Berkey's yeah. that on the way out the door. They're, they're like maroon and gold. Looked at them a few times when I've been in the ring. It inspires you to do I thought, went to stride them on. Didn't do it a bit. I got myself in the cabinet. I got myself the ABA, my ABA trophies in the, in the cabinet. One, one talent gets older, he's like, uh, you won't not getting them back, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> probably didn't even get it. He probably took it off the fellas. He's probably got it. it. <laughs> um, yeah, you won a senior ABA title at Bantamweight. That was in 2010, wasn't it? Come to that. You went to Golden Gloves. Why yeah. did you, what 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 prompted the move from the Solly Jazz? Me idol Martin Talon had left as well. Oh, I don't know if you ever remember Martin Talon. No. Martin Talon was a schoolboy champion from the um, the Solly. He was brilliant, brilliant fighter. Martin, he's from the same community as me. But he was just so good. Anyone around his age, you know, you probably, you probably thought Martin would have been a world champion as a professional. Yeah. He just really so good. He was vicious as well, and uh, Martin left. And last season, Dave Tonk left as well. And yeah. you, every, you have your you have your your coach, don't you? Dave was Go my to, coach. Yeah. But you know, everyone puts the same amount of time to the gym, and they do it for free. But there's you, different fighters. There's some, bonds, don't you? There's there's got to be that bond there, lad. That if there's no bond there, it could be the best coach. Yeah. You could say to me, "Oh, David, Chan, best coach you've ever trained with, Tony Chandler," and I'd be like, "Yeah, there's nothing there between me." Or I could say to you, vice versa, "You've got to have that. You've got to resonate with the person, yes. haven't you?" Definitely, and it's, it's it's a good tip for the for the young lads to turn and pro because they think that they go to these world renowned trainers, they might they might think he's a bellend. No. I mean, you might be sitting in the, in this gym thinking, "I've heard he's a good coach, he's the best out here," but he's not for me. You know what I mean. Look, lad, it's I, I always say this, like a great fighter doesn't make a great coach either. People say, oh, lad, he was an amazing fighter, but it doesn't mean he's an amazing coach. A coach and a fighter are two different things. Um, what works for you mightn't work for me. It's like Josh Warrington's half fella. I've seen him on video sitting in the cafe, smoking and say, yeah, he's on yeah. later, Sandra. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're thinking, how could he coach someone to, to that level? But he did. Do you know what I mean? Exactly it's, that. It, it, it's, it's horses for courses. Yeah. And, yeah. So you went to Golden Gloves? Yeah, so Dave left, Martin left, and um, I went myself. I went with me, my cousin, and Joseph, he went to the Tundra, and um, I went to Golden Gloves with, with Martin. I was at the Golden Gloves. Brilliant. First day I went in there, and um, it was in the, the Belvedere, it's still there now in the South Ends, the Belvedere, and I went in there, and I could hear, boom, boom, for, uh, no, you go in a boxing gym, and you think it was gloves and it wins, it was fucking football getting volleyed round. <laughs> The kids were playing football around the coach, five a side, and the, the coaches taking one out the f- pitch and it's taking them on the pads, and then, and then right, you're off the pads now, and you're going back playing football. It was just a wow. madhouse. I remember thinking, wow, this is not structured. This because the shot is well structured. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and Joe, Arp, Joe Arp is walking around giving people a drink and stuff like that. Joe Arp was um, Kevin Smith's number two, but he was you know, like he was. He had a good coach himself, Joe Harper. Joe, Joe Harper was our fella. Like the Liverpool community, I know Joe Harper. And this, wow, this is crazy. This, this is fucking mad. But Kevin, Kevin Smith was so technical and good. If you want to work and, and work hard, you'll win with Kevin Smith. But if you don't, if you want to mess it around, you can and you won't do nothing. So he could have really good fighters next to really fighters who aren't. Mediocre. Yeah, because they don't, don't want to do the work. And him. Um, 
we the gym was getting done up at the point at that point, so we went and trained in the 051 two days a week, Tuesdays, oh no, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in the 051 on the fourth floor, and then Franny and the gym on a Tuesday and Thursday. So that was our that was our routine then. Um, for the next few months before the gym got well, um, done up because I got a community grant, it got, a, not community, it got a lottery grant because they won four school with titles in one year. And we found it, Peter Fowler, Andy Jevons, and Ryan Brody. Don't know if you don't know Ryan Brody. Ryan Brody, Ryan yeah, Brody. a lot of people speak highly of Ryan yeah. Brody and say how, how, how much of a quality operator yeah. he was. He's like a myth, isn't he? You Do you know what? Do you know what's crazy as well, Jazz? When you're saying this to me, I boxed in Derby Lane, and when I left Derby Lane before I went to the Solly. I went the Golden Gloves for a little bit, right? But I just, I didn't really ever fit. I didn't really settle. But during that time, right, the Golden Gloves would become homeless again. And we were training in Proflex Gym in Garston. We were training three nights a week there. It was Wayne Smith. Um, and there was like, at the time, there was like Michach, there was Marcel Braithwaite, there was Stephen Floyd. There was there was good fighters around me, me in there at that time. And like, uh, yeah, we, we, we'd be training them. And it was just like sort of they never had a home and then they, they got a grant and, and the gym got redone up and it ended up where it is now. Yes. So it's mad because as yes. you're saying that to me, it's like history's repeated itself, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um so go on, carry on. Because the South End of Liverpool doesn't get the funding that the North End mm. gets, does it? No. It's always it been like that. Yeah. They haven't got as many boxing gyms in Liverpool. In, on the North End of Liverpool there's like twenty gyms, isn't there? Yeah, on the there's, there's one on every Gemini. corner, isn't there? The Golden Gloves, maybe a few more now, but it's no, there's not way, many. Yeah, it? it's the it's the other end of the city where it's at, isn't yeah. it? It's like two different worlds, isn't it? You can tell by the accent, can't you? If he's from the north or south <laughs> yeah. end, you can just tell. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. So, um, so then, um, we Kevin Smith won the school boys got to the final when the um, next year went to junior ABAs. Won the junior ABAs. Oh no, the golden belt. Remember the golden belt? There was it under tens. No. I don't know what it's called now, the novices, I think. It's the novices, called. yeah, under 10s, because they have the under 10s, they have the under 20s, and then it's open class in it, the ABAs, yeah. do you know what I mean? So the under 10s, was that the golden belt? Yeah, under 10s, won them, then... Was that nationally you won that, Josh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And then see, like even the under tens, people don't understand. No, no, it's hard to win. Yeah. W- win the under tens, yeah. you know, Merseyside and Cheshire, you get out of there, and then you're fighting. You, you've got you've got to be kids from fucking here, there, and everywhere to win, and especially yeah. at the lower weights, it's busier as well, isn't it? Yeah. When you were growing yeah. up as well, it yeah. would have been more busier. Where when you got a bit older, it might that might have changed because yeah. you were light. Yeah. This is always a school, by the way. Yeah, this, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, yeah, you're still a kid, so it's it's ram. You've got to fucking, but it's not. You've got to box everyone yeah. to win, haven't you? It's hard. That was go for the confidence that one because you go on the schoolboys at that point. I'd already been the schoolboys with the Sully and lost. I'd already been the golden uh, the under tens with the Sully and lost. Quite a you this, right? As a world champion sitting in the chair now, has there ever been a time where you've been beat or where you've lost or you've had a fucking proper hiding and sparring? Because that happens as well. Yeah. I don't know whether that does happen to world champions, but it certainly happens yeah. to all people. Yeah. <laughs> And you go home, and have you ever thought, wow, this isn't for me? Or like, no, you've, I've, have you ever questioned? I've cried with anger. Yeah, questioned I've, yourself like, I've cried I'm with, not good I've enough. Cried, no, no, never. I've cried with anger that I need to get better. Mm. Real, real anger. Like, there's, there's, there's wake up calls, I, isn't there, Jazz? Along the way, just as you think, there's always someone. Just as you think, like, you're getting there, yeah. or you feel like, yeah. yeah. I'm flying at the minute, sparring. It seems to just be like stepping up. Someone comes. Yeah, th- I've, I've lost many someone. times. Yeah, I've lost many times. And it, it never leads me to think I'm not good enough. It it, it fucking drives me round the bend. Is and, there any sparring it, partners? And no, I need to get better. You know? Is there any sparring partners where they'd say, like, Jack Brennan's coming in tonight, and you go, oh, fuck. Because you know that's going to be a hard night. That's no, a fuck. I go, yes. Because he's coming in and I think, <laughs> how, yeah. how am I going to get around this cunt, you know what I mean? Because you know it's going to be, you know yeah. it's going to be competitive. Yeah. Yeah. And at the same way, I don't think, I don't think, yes, I'm sparring him because I know I'm going to do him in. I don't think that. I think, oh, I don't know. There's no challenge. Yeah, there, no, there's I mean? got to be a challenge. There's no growth here. If it's, if it's nip and suck and it's 50-50, it's decent. If, it, yeah. if, if you've got the upper hand, there's no growth in it. Yeah. But if, if their level's up, like that's where you've thought different to me. No, if they'd say to me, we've got yeah. blah, blah, coming in tonight, yeah. I'd go, oh, fuck. I'd be jogging up and down the gym thinking, you better get me shit together here, lad, because it's <laughs> going to be on when I get in here, you know what I mean? You know, you know it's going to be, you know yeah. it's going to be a hard night. Sean, you know what Sean I mean? McCombs like that in Ireland now. Sean McCombs, he just can't get near them. 
I have to think, how am I going to fucking... Um, this Got to work them out. You know what I mean? As the levels get higher as well, I was speaking to Simo about this the other day. At a lower level, like, there's so much on, there's so much there in, in a way, like, opportunity. So when you're boxing, like, there'll be a lot of chinks in, in people's chains, like, at the levels I'm fighting and stuff like that, where it's like, yeah, he does this, he shows that, he's fainting and, and the flinching and that. When you get to the level you're at, Josh, there's yeah. no tells, there's no gaps, there's, you've got to create them openings, you've got to make yeah. them spaces. And, and There's a lot of predictability, though, as well. At the, on the other side, the flip side of that coin, there's a lot of predictability because you've got that good by patterns and routines. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, so you can you go every time he every time he, he throws a jab, he slips inside or every And it's t- brilliant if you don't know what he's doing, but if you figure out what he's doing because there's predictability. You know where that's that gonna he's be. He's that good and you know it's predictable that he's gonna do it. Yeah, every so, time he throws that jab out, yeah. you're looking for him to throw that because you're thinking you're getting the left hook, or you're, yeah. you're trying to throw them shots yeah. out of him because yeah. you know where he's going to go. Yeah. It, 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 it's but, a game of chess, yeah, isn't it? But it's a think of one's game. Variation, variation comes in because they are predictable, but they've got three or four different ways around the same movement. So if I drop the shoulder, then I'll jab. It might be a brilliant jab, and as a good fighter, you'll be predictable that you're going to throw it and it's going to land. But as a really good fighter, you'll throw drop that shoulder and then throw the back hand and then the next time you throw it yeah that's it I mean? you're trying to think you're thinking like I'm going to lean in I'm going to show him this and give him the back hand and then next time when I lean in he's going to think that's coming but guess what bang there's the left hoof have a little slice yeah. of that and then it starts to become where it's yeah. like you'll go to do it and I'll be aware of it and I'll be like not tonight lad bang have a little, and it, it, you're trying to think each other you're trying to like if someone wants me to come to them I'll start laughing and be like no lad not tonight playing, you, yeah, yeah. You come to me, it's one of them, it's a game, isn't it? It's, then, it's level, only people who yeah. understand it, but as the levels get higher, it gets higher, harder faster and faster. And harder faster. And harder. Like Tetris on level two is all right, isn't it? <laughs> but level 20, when they're just dropping, you know I mean? you've got to pre anticipate where it's going to be. Do you know what? I spoke to Dean Garner about this, and when you get to a certain level, Jazz, there's no there's, there, there, there's no easy fight to fucking any level. But I mean, yeah. when you get to that certain level, it's like, listen, no matter who you box or whatever, they're not going to bring a gardener in or a ballet dancer. They're gonna be hard fights, aren't they? Yeah. Always. Yeah, yeah. You've got to be prepared for that mentally. Yeah, Switched on. And the other side too, as well. If you get to a certain level, and then you fight somebody you haven't fought for years because he's still starting out. It's so unpredictable because you used to go fighters who are pre- predictable, and you're predicting pre- predictability. <laughs> A lot of predictable <laughs> shells going there. Predictable man. <laughs> you're uh, then when you're he does something that's so predictable. <laughs> <laughs> You predicted that <laughs> when, when you do something that's so unorthodox, it just throws you off. You know what I mean? Someone, yeah. someone just like throws a, seven, seven jabs at you, and you go, Wow, when's he gonna stop? Yeah. And he's yeah. just that bad, he's throwing, loads. yeah, because it's not textbook, it's not stuff yeah. that you used to deal with, it's 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 off the cuff, it's strange, and yeah. it's different people, different styles. An Italian like come in the gym once and he'd just do madness, and you'd be thinking to yourself, like, what, what the fuck does he do? Or sometimes you could be watching someone from the outside if you're sparring, you'd be on the apron ready to get in. And you think you've got it all worked out. You're looking at him going, he's shite. I'm absolutely yeah. smoking when I get in here. Yeah. That, 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 that lead hand, dead low, his backhand comes, you fucking see it from the back of the hole. You get in there, bang. Yeah. What the fuck? Is it's different good? when it's in front is, of you, is isn't it? Is he good or is he shit? I don't know, because he's bad me. <laughs> <laughs> am I good or am I shit? So it's like, isn't it? <laughs> you went to Everton Red. <laughs> yeah, so, so, sorry, lad. Fucking hell, keep going sorry, off. Right. Like, no, so, go, 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 um, under 10s, then the schoolboys. Um, got to the final box, Martin Ward. Remember Martin Ward? Martin European Ward, yeah. champion, really yeah. good fighter. He won everything as a, as a, um, as a school winner, junior, even as a senior. Um, he beat me in the final. Um, next year was the junior ABAs, won them two years on the bounce. Started fighting for England, NABCs, travel the world, never been on all these stuff like that. Went, went away. Um, first place ever went to was an Island called Sardinia. Couldn't believe it. I'm not Scotty though, never been on Aldi. Oh. Get the sardine, yeah. Everything's just uh, no. What uh, I'd like to ask people is sardine really as nice as I thought it was because I'd never been away, or is you'd it have really to go back and revisit that again, wouldn't yeah. you, to see what yeah. it was like? But you'd never been to Walton Jazz by the sound of things, so some nice place, like some nice 
places that you never see, even in England, isn't it? Do you know GB and uh, when you got like obviously being selected boxing with England and GB and stuff like that. At that time, I also seen a video of you down there recently, just watching them on the running track and stuff like that. When you were having a little look on that, at that time back then, did you realize how like big that was? Just like how no. how good you were or how prestigious it is? Because like now, no. as an adult, you know if you get selected for England to box with England and wear that vest, or if you get selected for GB. It's a big thing in it, lad. You know, you you you're not a normal kid, and you're definitely the top of the pile. Yeah, you definitely there's like a, t- a, a tiny percentage. Giant it's an elite, up, yeah. an elite. Um, well, at that, in the same way, no, I didn't. I didn't. Was you just say, a kid I, playing I, out? I remember, remember getting the the letter to say you've been selected to go to GB on a trial. It was called a, what was it called back then, like a trial basis. They have a look at you and go down there, you do it for free. They just have a look at you. See an assessment, it's called, called isn't it? Yeah, so see, you've got the like the the ment- it, it was one past the assessments. Yeah, I know what you're trying to say. It's so you picked, but you, you, you provisionally do, yeah. And I remember being so happy to get on it, but it was expected of myself, so I didn't really. I was always even now. I strive for for the next big thing. Like once you're on there, I can say yes, I've done that, and then the next one. That, yeah, that, what's any, next? Anyone's success in it. At that time, no, when you were getting selected for GB and that, yeah. was home life still not jazz? Was your mum and dad still on the fucking gear and that? So, yeah. so, so, so you're. I'm going to like Sardinia and places like that and coming home. It's pointless even saying, I mean, it's pointless even telling me man and dad what it was like because they'd never been on all the. It's like. You can't relate. You can't relate. Them, it's two, you're living in two different worlds. Yeah, but this was fine. It was two different worlds, and it was my escape. You know what I, mean? I was about to say like this Avatar is you found. Yeah, yeah. you found you found another world, haven't you? And yeah. when you're out there, you're all equals. You're fucking out and about, and you're away from all that. Yeah. And your it was it was, it found you. You never found it. Yeah. It Before, found you. Yeah. It saved like you. Ever, ever, like ever, ever <sighs> found me. So it was like, like you know what as well. I when I look, I've seen loads of like pictures on you on Instagram and that, and you don't half shoot red, you know, just <laughs> fucking looks boss on you, lad. That, you want to fucking rethink all that for that? I get on boss with you as well, really like you that, but that's how the things we're gonna have to fucking iron so out, you know. It's um, at that that point though when I'm when I'm. Like you're saying, the madness and all that. I before the age of eighteen, before I found God, that madness. I used to thrive off that every day. So I'd see these experiences, what weren't good for the for the young child or even a teenager, and I'd use it. I'd, I'd run thinking about it, and it was dark, real dark. When I think back now, I think fucking hell, that was dark. Your mind frame there. How you even who you are now? What what, what changed somewhere along the line? You know what I mean? Because I, I weren't the same person internally. You know? Your life changed, all oh, jazz. Because once once your parents changed, your outlook. If they were still like that now, you'd probably be a completely different person now. Because it makes you a fucking animal, and that's where your drive comes from. That's where your passion comes from to get out of it, to want to be better. That that determination, that grit. Like, I'm. This is this is not yeah. how it's gonna be for me, mate. And that yeah. that. that gives you that thing and you look at the best fighters yeah. tyson fighters like that that they come from them type of places where they fucking put something deep down inside you yeah. where if it would have been your tea's on the table son and you'd have been having fucking cottage pie and that you wouldn't have found yourself winding up in them places and you wouldn't have had that same like tenacity it's been nice but it's fucking it would have been different yeah but like i want to say it like you can say all I can, you know, I could, I could start saying, yeah, but this is what I've done, I, I chose this mentality, blah, 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 but the truth is, though, Jack, there's, like, the boxing clubs that we go to, these amateur clubs and all that, these people are given the time for nothing, you know what I mean, these, like... Legends. People think that, they're, like, they look at the, the, the finished article, but they don't know there's thousands of good people who've given their time up to, to make this kid. You know there's I mean? thousands of good kids who don't ever see... Like the amount of kids I've seen in a gym and went, he's going to be a quality fighter. Well, they are quality fighters. They're going to amount to something and they don't. That's what I'm saying. It's a fucking yeah. massive pile jazz in it. And, you know, there's kids who've put major work into the sport and yeah. they haven't got out what they thought they were going to get. There's, and, and, and the likes of them coaches, they're there, as you say, hail, rain or shine. Yeah. You know, it's, free, it's basically free, isn't it? free. All free. And, and <clears throat> you know, it's, a, it's an escaping. Go to a boxing gym and tell me that the kids who are in there won't be from adverse backgrounds or from, yeah. like, the, the are, lad. All the boys are in there. When yeah. you go in the gym, there's a reason you're there. Everyone's got a reason. Everyone's yeah. got a why. And a lot of people aren't just like, 
I'll put the telly on and seeing such and such and for to go down there and try it. And pe- I feel like people who do go there and try it, they get it and they'll be like, fuck that. It's not what yeah. I thought it was because it's not nice when you get it, is it? You know what I mean? It, it It's... it's <clears throat> Do you yeah, know, love, some people go there like myself as a form of self punishment. That's why I realised as a, as a later on as I got older, it was a form of self punishment. If that makes sense, mm-hmm. which is dark in itself, isn't it? That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. I'm feeding on other people and using my pain to express myself. A lot of people don't like discomfort, and it's a place of discomfort. Yeah. You go there, it's going to be uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, it's going to be hard work. It's going to be disciplined. There's going to be exercise, and it's not just it's not just the fighting lad. It's the lifestyle that comes yeah. with it. You've got to be disciplined. You've got to be dedicated, you know, and that's something I'll touch on, on with you in, in a short while. You want a senior ABA title. So, yeah, after the, after the fucking hell, got on another tangent there tonight. We no, I like that, this. Is he ever going to shut up him? <laughs> so, uh, so that's so what I mean, mate. That's what I mean, After you being all that, when you see the ABA, you went back to Sully, but Kevin Smith and Joe Harper went to Sully. So I spent a good few years with Georgie Treble in the, um, the Golden Gloves. Living in the park road at the time. Um, and Georgie Treble, really good coach for us all. But Kevin Smith got the job as a national coach for Scotland and he put George in charge of us. Georgie was a lot, very busy with work. He used to have me on demolition with him at the age of 16, 17. Very, very close to George. Georgie couldn't really get to the gym. He was mad busy with work. Then he brought other coaches in. And you know, Georgie, so... Kevin had brought George in for us. Now George has brought John Walton. John Walton was a brilliant coach. Brilliant coach, I like John, great fella, nothing wrong with John, but it was like, did I agree to this when I came here? I agreed to come with Kevin Smith, you know what I mean? The vibe had changed and what you set out to, to yeah, yeah the agreement with what it was when yeah. you f- first started. And looking back now, like maybe I was a bit, I didn't know how to express myself and I didn't know how to talk and I didn't know how to um, communicate and maybe, maybe, maybe I owe Warbo an apology in a way because... I didn't show up but the, the gratitude for the time and effort that he put in with you. Yeah, because I didn't, I didn't know how to tell him. I, yeah, and I didn't know how to tell anyone. I didn't sign this. I I come here for Kevin Smith. Boxing is a very selfish sport, and it's just the most selfish sport in the fucking world. And the thing is, you've got to make selfish decisions sometimes. And if you want to do something um, with the sport, you've got to try and make these decisions. And it's never easy to leave a gym. It's net because. Back to what we were saying before, they've put a lot of time in Mick Hunt. Like, I owe Mick Hunt so much. Like, he helped me build the foundations of just knowing, like, the proper ABCs of it, the basics of it. And, like, he he taught me how to box. Do you know what I mean? And then I left to go to Solly. And that was, like, one of the hardest decisions for me to make. And people don't understand it. It's like... Mick never trained you Monday, Wednesday and Friday for fuck all for two years, day in, day out all the time and, yeah. and put all that time and effort into you and then you turn around and say to him, you know what Mick, I'm leaving. It's 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 a, so it's, a, it's a horrible position feel, to be in. You feel so relieved that you, you've you gonna, you, you need to change and you've got to change but you also feel like you do this, don't you? This yeah, time. because but at the same time, sometimes you need it for growth because you yeah. don't feel like you can get onto that next level or yeah. that next stage. Yeah. It's like the path's ending or... You like it feels like it's a roadblock, doesn't it? It's yeah, the end of this yeah. Road, it's uh, like this is the end of this road, and if you just stay there, you're just gonna you're gonna be existing, but you're not gonna be living. Yeah. And if you want growth, yeah. you've got to move to get to that next stage. If you want to get to Tesla's level twenty, lad, you can't. It's good way of putting it. Yeah, you can't stay yeah. on two. <laughs> just keep playing two, lad. You never want to get to that, twenty. It's that brutal, isn't it? Hundred percent. That brutal. You going back to Solly? Yeah. Great year. So, um, Kevin Smith and. Kevin's number two, Joe Harper, once again in the gym that I started after once again. You know what I mean? Didn't want to leave the Sully in the first place. And like you're saying, we had the same conversation. Didn't want to leave the gloves again. But now it's even better for me because I'm with Kevin Smith and Joe Harper. And, and you're in the place. Yeah, back, back, back at home with me boxing parents sort of thing, if that makes sense. So it was brilliant. And then at the same time, I just met David Burke. <laughs> met him as I knew he was, but never like... He was older than me, a lot older than me, but now David Burke's coaching as an amateur, amateur coach and um, his, his WBU world titles on, on the wall and all that. Um, I think David Burke's one of the greatest fighters to come out of Liverpool, full stop. 
Like, yeah. look at me, he's on fighter. I seen him turn up to the gym one day as a coach and um, pulled his egg out of his bag and started sparring Tom Stoller. And I was like, why, is he still, why isn't he still fighting? Lad, he'd be in the gym now still and like he can still move and you'll say like, what's that? Shite the art. And you start knocking press yeah. something and you're looking at him thinking, no, yeah. do you know what yeah. I mean? So he's, he's an he animal. He was great for the fitness because Kevin Smith was brilliant technically and Berkey, Keep your fit. fitness wise, it was just a perfect team and so the, his first year and my first year in the ABAs and it was Kevin Smith's first ABA champion. We all won the ABAs that night together, you <laughs> know what I mean? Brilliant. <laughs> Greens against James Allen from the army who won it the year before. Remember reading the boxing news the morning of the fight and said, um, basically, I won't win. James Allen, I'll, I'll, I'll out hustle anybody. And that just fucking <laughs> the fire, I thought. He, 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 to win it. a senior ABA title, though, apart from the Olympics, it's the holy grail of amateur boxing in it. Just, what, what else is there, really? If you're not going to win Olympic titles or like be like, you know, Boxing like in a league tournaments for GB, there's nothing better than an ABA title. It's the it's it's the title you want, isn't it? No, what you have to sound like really I don't know, you'd probably think I'm like an arsehole for saying this, but to me it was just a stepping stone because I stayed at Franny Hand's gym for two days a week. I kept going back to Franny Hand's gym, got a good relationship with Franny Hand's and Franny Hand told me that the ABA is you want to turn professional. You need an ABA title because back then it was different. It wasn't about the views and the likes and all that. It was about <laughs> if you can win an ABA title, that's how you get a contact as a professional boxer. Mm-hmm. And um, out if you put asses on seats, yeah. you could be a fucking Love Island lad, and you'd oh, be on yeah. there. You know what I mean? Top of the pops, Madden. and you're making more money, lad, than 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 kids who've sacrificed everything, dedicated yeah. their whole lives, and you you've just rolled up and you're on misfits yeah. and coining it. Can, can you make everyone laugh on Instagram? That's yeah. how you get in the contact yeah. these days, yeah. and you sell tickets. Mm-hmm. It's a good fighters who don't go out to nightclubs, don't go, don't socialise, they don't party, they don't do fuck all because they're committed, but they don't sell tickets because they haven't got a fan base. There's some tickets. fighters as well who don't make the transition very well from the amateur game to the pro game in the way of, and like, me and you could sit down and watch a fight and be like, whoa, lad, that was a brilliant fight. Another 10 lads in the booze who've never really been around boxing and be like, that was shite, that because no, yeah. they didn't see know-how to or they, didn't see, they don't appreciate the yeah. skill or the yeah. skill set that's going on and there's some great lads who've turned over especially in the lighter weights and they just haven't they haven't made that transition very well and because it's not like dead entertaining yeah. they don't sell tickets and you know yourself yeah, that's the be all and end all yeah. if you don't sell tickets yeah. you, you're not going to do well I didn't understand all this at the time I thought it was the amateur system if you come in the ABAs you can then fight for England if you win the Four Nations, then you go to the Europeans, you win the Europeans, then you go to Wales. That was my that mm-hmm. was the routine that I took. And that so I thought that was the same as the pros until you fight for the world title. And they say, Do you want this fight or not? Because if you do, let me know because we've got to put eighteen thousand pounds up for the commission fees. And as a fa- as a kid, so you probably never heard of that, have you? No. If you want to fight for the title, you have to just pay for the title, you know what I mean? <laughs> so you, that's why you see these rankings. You can have a world champion in one governor, but he's not fighting for another governor, but he's not ranked in the... So yeah, you could be like, this, yeah, not in the top WBU, you're not, you're not even fucking ranked and, and, and in the IBO, you're number one, or in the it, WBC, so I know what you mean. So paid the way into the rankings by buying these... Um, we're not buying them, because you still have to win them, but you have to pay to put the com- the, the, um, the commission fees title, the, the IB, what is it, all these European you, titles, yeah, yeah. or the intercontinental, you're buying your way into the ranking system, you know what I mean? So people don't understand that, so as an amateur, it's a, it's a lot different. Because mm. they've got the backhand of the big promoters, and they've got money men behind them, who's just saying, yeah, but we'll come to that, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, in, a, in a little bit of, gone, no, it's all right. no, it's okay, no, yeah, but like, now I think like, if you're not going, um, if you're not going the Olympics, if you win the ABAs, there's nothing else to stick around for, for me, personally, what it, w- um, what 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 else are you doing, Jazz? Are you gonna win yeah. another ABA title and yeah. keep? Bo- you gone. You'll 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 get more experience. You'll you'll box with the elite, but that's the the last stop yeah. before there's nothing else. Unless you're going down that other road where you're going to the world tournaments and you you're doing yeah. like the WSB and you're boxing in in the um, in the Olympics and the WSB for me personally, like the World Series boxing and all that. It's like you're not a massive miles off the clock, and no, you're not getting fucking yeah. paid and shit like we're, that. We're, we're level six rounds, Andy. We're professional world. Because Sam level. Maxwell, yeah. Box Lomachenko, and stuff like that. They yeah. the, like if if them fights if he never had a vest on and that was in America, they the rest of your life boxed. Yeah. 
be all having a six rounder with with heaviest fighters about, and you're coming home <laughs> feeling it as well, <laughs> eating a banana, going, "What? He was roaring." Yeah, some fights you're having, you're washing your head the next morning, no shampoo, and you think I'll just leave that because it's that <laughs> sore. You've got cogs in your head. I won't wash that bit. Wash the back. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> what were your hobbies outside or fuck what all, are your hobbies absolutely fuck all just boxing and running and weights and boxing and running and weights nah I've seen you catching pigeons like the going oh, in yeah, the box you go going in, in the box, box. yeah <laughs> 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 oh, well, I've got I've got um, two real solid mates you know what I mean I just like to keep me me mate close, hmm. close you know what I mean I, I had a group of mates coming up as I say but um now I keep close mates and I mean both of them they got they got pens. Small kids. circles, they're the they yeah. they they're like you realise that, don't you? As you get older, you yeah. think you've got loads of mates as a kid, but you haven't, they're just acquaintances and then as you get older you realise yeah. that yeah, I've got a certain amount of friends, I can count someone yeah. I know it's like a proper cliche <laughs> saying, but I can't really yeah, yeah. count fella, someone and how many fellas, yeah. I was gonna be amazing. I was gonna be amazing about oh, everyone. Yeah, yeah, everyone's me. Yeah, yeah does he uh, what's your favourite colour lad? What's your like for <laughs> your tea? Yeah. You lend us a tenant if you have not on. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you're a character lad, you're always up for a laugh. And I love that I buy you jazz. Who come up with jazz at TV? Yes. Was it you? Um, no, what I seen the way the world was gonna be, and I, I love it, I, you know. I tried to do it, you know. I tried to do it like a, a, a vlogging, is it called? Yeah. I tried to do a vlog, and it was just shy. I was doing it myself, but I was doing camp, and I had nothing else to do. Like a camp, a camp life, and I thought. In a few years, everyone will be doing this. You won't be turning professional without getting told you need to do this because you need to keep your media active and stuff like that. I'd just seen the way the world was going to be. So we had a bash at it, it was shite, but then the later come back to it. Jazz TV, yeah. Jazz TV, lad. Steph Boggan's gone jogging. Oh, that was lad, so funny, that way. Really. Ryan, like, there's Steph Boggan. Me, Bone Molly, <laughs> and then so it was just off the cuff, lad. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Steph Boggan's <laughs> gone jogging. I was <laughs> lad. <laughs> but I think she was. It, obviously, she'd seen the stuff, but it was like it become the joke. You know what I mean? Like, sorry, Steph. It was just that yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. After it, I seen a tagger in it, and I, and I just it lad it. Made, I I don't know why, but that's my sense of humour, lad. It just tickled me to fuck. No, so funny. She, yeah, she's the boys, yeah, she? yeah, she's all day, lad. She's raw. You and still Ryan playing the power lap challenge, isn't that? Still Ryan. He's doing well, isn't that? Yeah, still gang, still gangster. Serious yeah. one. He he be a boss one, still Ryan. That YouTube that would take up so much time. You know what I mean? So, 100%. so these YouTube fighters now don't YouTube boxing. I think just it's it's brilliant what they're doing. The, the revenue, they're creating their own revenue. I don't I don't I don't think that's bad for what no people think. I hate these YouTube boxers, but I think they're creating the revenue <laughs> themselves. They're not robbing off anyone. They're living an honest life. I've said it on here before. The likes of Jake Paul and that. I take me ass off to him, Jazz. Yeah. Fuck what you say. Listen, yeah. he can half have a portion for a YouTuber. He can yeah. fight. Is yeah. He, yeah, is he at that level? No, he's not. Is he going to be? No, he's not. But has he found a way to become relevant? Yeah, he has. Yeah. And that's very difficult. As we said before, there's yeah. people who've dedicated their lives and can't find that that way. Yeah. People are making a way. Yeah. Do you know there's what my, I mean? There's, there's the... Here's how I see it. There's, there's two roads get down to the that, that level. You can you can have you can be put all your time into media. And you're not going to be able to train like a pro, or you can put all your time to being a pro, and you're going to struggle with the media. Because no one knows who you are. The greatest yeah. fighter, but you're in a basement. So it's like that. So when you if you do meet, you'll get there faster because you're good with the media. But by the time you get there, you just got the solid foundations, and and you you're a lot better fighter. But then this fella gets the choice who he wants to fight, and mm. he doesn't have to fight you. You know what I mean? Yeah, it doesn't. And you're not getting a portion for half. Yeah. And you know what? It's mad how many how many great fighters is there who only people in that circle would know of. Like you might yeah. say, if if you're talking to a boxing head, you might go such and such, and, and go oh, Andrew Kane. Oh, what yeah. a fighter! What a Andrew Kane, bang it Brandon Dayard, seen Brandon Dayard? Yeah, Dayod. Brandon Dayard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For another quality fighter. There's loads. There's 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 fucking loads. But uh, people in the mainstream don't know about these the, these yeah. these fighters yeah. because they're not they're not active on 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 media. I totally understand. Yeah. I sit lads, sense of war with Ricky Gorman. Uh, fucking when you were doing sense of war, man. 
Oh, lad you seen the, the mild version, the first version. So Jonathan, he was, he was, he was doing it behind the camera. He just fucking written out. He wanted something to my half. Oh, I'm just in the strippers here. Just in the strippers here. Something, something, something. Said, Fuck off, lad. You, I'm just saying that to me half. Like, I'm, 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 <laughs> These gnomes are voting to be family. And just fucking ruin everything for 14 likes on YouTube. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it was funny, really. Lad, it was hilarious. And that, I could see the messages coming back in and that, Molly, and that. You're getting fucked, lad. No. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, Jay Carney, yeah, look, I, th- I don't think oh, yeah. I could spar it, but yeah, look, I've got a lad here. Asking people to spar, yeah, 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 and he's come back on that. You went, <laughs> I didn't spar anyone. Anyway. I'm not really the best at the minute, lad, but I'll get in there with you. But look, what about if you come down and get in with my lad? <laughs> yeah, you see me with you, did not you? It's so Jay Carney. Got the ass of a warrior, Annie. Jay Have it Carney. with anyone, yeah. lad. He fights anyone. <laughs> There's many fights you could do with Jay Carney. Jay Carney's ass. Spit it, yeah. yeah you could have done with many fights of skill, but he did many did fights. fights to do with his ass. Yeah, not half. You've got to have both, though, haven't you, Jazz? If you want to make it all the way to the top yeah. and you want to be in the elite, you've got you've got to have ass, you've got to have spirit, and you've got to have um, you've got to have the skills to back it up. And a bit more. You know, mm-hmm. luck, luck doesn't do you know harm as well. You know what I mean? Right place, right time. Hundred percent. Yeah, it, it, there is an element of luck to it. It don't depend on it, like as a fighter, because it doesn't exist if you depend on it. But no, it doesn't yeah. exist. But things can fall to you, and 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 things can happen. But as well, everything happens for a reason, and yeah. and sometimes we just can't see it. Let's touch on your pro career. You made your debut in the Olympia in January 2011 against Pavel Senkovs. At that time, was that a dream come true? It's a massive moment in anyone's career. Yeah, because I'd always wanted to be a professional. So when the ABA is 18, turned pro at 19. Didn't stick around. My last fight was the ABA final as an amateur. I didn't. I, I don't. I, I think that's the right move, though, Jazz. If you're not going yeah. elsewhere, that's the that's yeah. the direction to well, go. I was in. on the I was on the Great Britain team. I was like being told the groom for for the that the, the groom when you fall in Olympic fights. Yeah. You know what I mean? At that at that time, this year's champ um, fellow was going to the Olympics was Kal- 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 the FI. You know what I mean? So yeah, they already had someone pick, but I thought. Galal, your fire's going, you're not going, yeah. If yeah. you're not going, or are you fighting for that one spot, yeah. or do you just, do you just fucking go? Every, real every, boxing, you know, every kid who walks in the gym, if you want to be a fighter, I don't yeah. care who you are or yeah. where you're from, when you walk in that gym, if, if it grabs all of you, if boxing gets you, lad, you fucked it. It's, yeah. it's not going away. It's mild, isn't it? Yeah, but it, when you walk in that gym, if you, if you do fall in love with it, the dreams to be a professional fighter. I don't give a fuck who you are, and if you say no, no, I don't, I don't really bother about that. Yeah. You're a fucking liar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, but, everyone yeah. wants to turn pro, don't they? So let's just touch on that night. What was that like, Jazz, walking out there in the Olympia, and you know, it's different so, world, isn't it? So you know, good, yeah. and but, at home crowd, everyone there. Just who was coaching you at the time? Paul and Michael Stevenson. Ah, the Evan, Evan, Evan Red, Red Triangle. Triangle yeah. Who were coaching Peter McGrail and yeah. stuff like that now. Yeah. Some great, great fighters, great, great coach. Great Got an amazing stable of fighters. And you always have at the time when he's saying professional. I've been around. I actually went to Georgie Vaughan, one of the first coaches who went to Georgie Vaughan. Didn't see eye to eye. Not because I just didn't appreciate. Because here's the thing. It's mad how your careers went full circle, yeah. innit? So, just. what young fighters nowadays they look for, like I was, is like, can he hold the pads? What's he like on the pads? Like, is it flashes? But a lot of the work as a professional is just monotonous. You're gonna have to go into the same thing every single day f- for a decade, you know what I mean? Even longer. And that's what young fighters don't understand patience and monotony. It's just like every single day. So, like, I just thought there's no pads going on here, you know what I mean? Jim, <laughs> he was that. It was just a few bags and that. And I thought, it's not, it's not what it's made out to be. Then I went to Tony Belly, took me to Arnie Farnell's gym with him to have a little look. That, that stood out to me a lot more because there was Frankie Gavin in there and he was holding the pads, Tony Bell used there. And this is when you just turned over? I hadn't had a pro fight yet, I was looking for the gym. So have you always been close to Tony, Jazz, yeah? No, no, no. I've ne- never been close to Tony, Tony's just, he's just a good man. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, a so good man. He's yeah. just rolled you down there and said, yeah, have a little yeah. look at this. Just want to help, yeah. Yeah. Just, 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 just a good man and like these good fighters down there, like Olympians, like uh, good fighters, well, well, yeah, I'm a champion, Frankie. Frankie Gavin, I was watching Frankie Gavin this morning mm. on his amateur fight, so brilliant. Um, so that was a bit more shiny, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I totally and understand. That's what you're for it was the appealing young to you at the time. Yeah. Like, yeah, everyone's in pads. They've got fighters who are relevant to it here now. Yeah. It's like, this is where it's at, it's going yeah. on, where Georgie Vaughan was probably a better coach. But at the time, you just couldn't fucking see it. Yeah, yeah. You could, yeah. You, it weren't what you were looking for. Looked, like, it must have been, what must have been, like, eight years later, he was the coach for me. The one, you know what I mean? And I just didn't see it at the time. But 
Um, then I went to Oliver Harrison's Harrison's gym. Wow, um, more than that. Der- Der- Derry brought me up there with him. You know, I'm not driving at this point. Billy took me up there. Derry took me up there. Um, was yeah. Derry boxing? Martin, uh, Murray. Yeah, Derry was there. Martin Murray. Yeah. There was some good fighters in Oliver and Addison's gym, weren't there? Yeah, yeah, the Very good the fighters. Was Rocky Fielding in there? No. I think he was. Yeah. I think so, yeah. There was, there was, he had a good stable yeah. of fighters, didn't he? A great stable yeah. of fighters. God rest his soul. Everyone speaks so highly of him. Yeah, they do. Um, and so I'm at the same time getting contacts with promoters. You know what I mean? So I didn't know I didn't know how to go about this stuff. So I go to, go to London with my mate, Carl. <laughs> my mate, Carl, comes with me. I've got no one like... Guide me or not, I don't understand this. What do you get paid? What are you waiting? And I didn't know. You didn't so know. Go to me, Frank Wallen in the hotel. Frank Wallen and Dean Powell, and he um, sits down. Hiya, Frank, nice to meet you. And um, my mate goes, Hiya, Frank. And he goes, Hi, oh, mate, you were starting. He went, No, no, no. But he's my mate, and he goes, No, no, I'm his, I'm his agent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was going on here. Yeah. It was on there. He couldn't say, No, he's, no, he's not. <laughs> no, I no, he's not. In the room, he yeah. What's going he's, on? He's, he's yeah. thinking these are amateurs, <laughs> these <laughs> in the highest order. So you just so sat at that point, lad, he said, Me and Offit, give me an Offit. Get home. And he often, and then Dean Powell phoned me and said, What was Frank like to talk with, lad, to gentleman, deal with? Absolute gentleman. Yeah, you fucking all right. From, yeah, he was, he was a gentleman. Yeah. He really was. And um, when I get home, Dean Powell phoned me and said, um, so basically what we agreed, this many fights and this is the wages. But the wages he said in the phone was half the wages that he said in the hotel. So we've seen in the hotel, I've offered him too much. He'd fucking take anything. He hasn't got a clue. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey man, his agent, <laughs> <Carl>. <laughs> his, his agent didn't even have a fucking clue. His agent didn't even say nothing. You know his mean? agent needs an agent. <laughs> so, so, so I remember Dean Powell, everyone speaks highly of Dean Powell, but I had one, one, um, Interaction with him and it was this, and he said to me, "Listen, James, you, you got three options or something like that. I think it was I'll make it of course or something." He said, "You you smile and get away with this. Two, smile and be cheeky, and you might get away with it. <laughs> or three, you can be too cheeky, and you won't get away with it. And you're being three cheeky, so I'm a <laughs> put the phone down. <laughs> the cheeky, because you're so <laughs> and, and then walking, walking up and down the garden, going that cheeky cunt at the same time. Going, oh, my fucking chance of Frank's gone. You know what I mean? And the phone rings back. He, <laughs> he brings me back. And I'm like, fuck, he's rang back. Are you doing this? <laughs> oh, are you doing? <laughs> but but that was the only. So in the end, I didn't go for the meet with him because I just, I just felt like. I don't know what the fuck I'm wearing, but I'm not in a bed. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what I'm wearing, but we fucking do it. So that, that, was, that was the interaction at the start with Frank. Um, Frank was an absolute gentleman. Apparently, Dean, Dean Powell was loved by everyone in boxing. It was a, it was a shame. It was sad to hear he took his own life and stuff like that. I think he was missed by, by the, the boxing community. That was the only experience he had with Dean. And, mm. um, Never got to know him like everyone else did, but anyway, um, I then went for the meeting with um, Ricky Atten, which is boxing, I was working for Ricky Atten at the time, and Frank were only two. What was that like as well? Because obviously, Ricky Atten, lad, as British boxing goes, he's up there and he, he's a fucking geezer. Yeah. And at that time, Ricky was even more relevant now then than he is yes. now. So going to Ricky Atten, yeah. when you've just turned over, you're still only young yourself, Jazz, and Ricky Atten's there. What was that experience like? Well, Frank Warren and Frank Maloney. Frank Maloney. <laughs> Frank, who's now Kelly Maloney, offered me more than Ricky. But Ricky Atten was Ricky Atten. And as a boxer, I didn't give a bollocks about the money. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't know what it was worth anyway. Weren't much less, but I thought, no, I want to go with, with Ricky. With, I want to go with Ricky, you know what I mean? What was Ricky like to talk to and that? Not when you got in there? Gentleman didn't have much interaction with him, but just seeing him on fight nights and stuff like that, gentleman, you know what I mean? He's one of the lads in there, and that's what I liked about Ricky, he's one of the boys, and I, I thought I could trust that about people. He's, 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 he, I can relate to him, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I grew up like watching him, remember watching him, um, me and my mate watching him against Mayweather, and just being sick when he lost. <sighs> so do I, I can remember, I, I, but you know what? <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't watch this, but I thought it was in the post forum when when he was boxing Mayweather because I knew the level Mayweather was at, yeah. and like I remember when he boxed Costa Shoe lad, and like I I was I'm a, I'm a big Ricky Atten fan now. Yeah, shout out Ricky, and um, yeah, when he boxed Mayweather, I just thought it was a bit soon, but I watched Hitman recently as well, and I think the management behind it and once like. 
once Billy Graham was out of the picture, lad, and what happened with his half fella and all that, I don't think the gardens was right what he had, and I just think Mayweather was just, it was a bit too soon, and then he, off the back of that, he boxed from Normark in Manchester, I can't remember, and then, and then straight into Paggy out, like, whoa, it was, yeah. it was a mad, mad, like, sort of moment in his career, and then, and I think it might have been different if the timing was different and, and whatever, but that's just me, fan from the yeah. outside, looking in, but Ricky Atten, I couldn't even comment on it because I don't know. I mean, yeah. I remember, the, I remember the, um, the promotion situation where it just went a bit mad. It was up the wall after, after everyone was getting fights and we were all flying under this banner, and then it just went bang overnight. Is it's that like, what happened? Yeah, it's just like I never got no like reason on why why it just went tits up or not like that. Ah, is that how it come to? And then Jazz, what happened? Did they say, "Listen, this is it, it's over"? Or no? No, I um, my contact had run out. Was sort of looking elsewhere because it just went. It was just sort of like gone. It was like there was no, there was no um, communication from no one. It was like it was just over. What's happening with the promotion? I mean, what's happening? And and at this time, I went like like I am now. Whereas you, you know what the sport, you know what the bit, not the sport, the business. You understand the business, but at then you, you, you sort just of understood amateur the sport. Boxer. You're an amateur boxer, you're the kid listening to the people around you who are guarding you. You need good counsel, don't you? If yeah. you're turning professional, yeah. you definitely need good counsel yeah. because it's a fucking, it's a world of the unknown. Yeah. Uh, and, and keep your coaches as your coaches. That's what I, uh, that's what I tell young kids now, turning professional. Keep your coaches as your coach. Keep your manager as your manager and your promoter as your promoter and make sure you're the boss because you're the fighter. Because when your promoter is having a say on what you should be doing in the gym, He's wrong because that's your coach's job, and you should be picking the right coach. When your coach is telling you your manager what he should be doing, it's none of his business. Know what I mean? So you should create your own team and listen to everyone individually. Because what happens is agendas get get mixed, and it just becomes a bit of a shit show. Know what I mean? Because everyone's lying for their own agenda, but yeah. at the end of the day, it's your fucking agenda because you're the yeah. fighter, and it's what's best for yeah. you. And if you get it so distorted, mixed up what you left with there is loyalty to the people closest to you, which is always going to be your coaches, you know what I mean? And then, yeah, you've got to burn bridges with someone and it's putting you in a position, putting you in a predicament, putting, and putting more pressure on you. Yeah. And there's enough fucking pressure on you if you're a fighter with, without all, all, all the fucking palaver. It's fucking madness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At this point now, when you were with Ricky, um, or boxing under him, had you boxed, had you become English champion now? Or no? Is that prior to that? Um, or was it under his banner at that yeah, time? Yeah, well, it turned professional with Ricky. And I also spoken to Steve Woods. I just messaged these people on my phone, you know. I, I just got numbers <laughs> off them and texted them. I Ricky, I'm an ABA champion. I am I, Frank, I'm an ABA champion. Did they ask to look at you, Josh? Was it one of them? Let's see your spa, let's see your move. No, or? because at that time, you have to remember, ABA champion was worth something. 100%, you know yeah. I mean? Yeah, and you're not just making it up off the back of things. It's, yeah. he, he is, so you don't need every, to see yeah. Do you see, do you see seen enough if you see that next to yeah. your name? So every year, apart from the year I got to the final, the first year I got to the off the, the BBC, ABA finals on BBC every year, 36 years consecutively, and then I get to the final and it's on <laughs> fucking hat and TV on the internet. They oh. weren't even like streams then, you know what I mean? That was the first boxing stream, I think, at the time. Mm. So that, that was a new thing at the time. Mm. So, um, but... See these promoters, they still knew that ABA champion meant something. And I was fighting for I was fighting for Great Britain at the time and I was only nineteen, so they, they were interested in me. Yeah, but rightfully Steve, so. Steve Woods, um, because the gym I went to, they haven't really signed with Paul and Michael Stevenson. It was Kevin Satchel and Ryan Farag. Ryan Farag got to the ABA final, he'd lost to Martin Ward, who I told you about before. Mm. He just beaten Luke Campbell in the quarterfinals in yeah, quarterfinals or the semi finals. And I boxed Kevin Satchel in the the area finals, so they were going. They were now going to be my teammates, and they were looking for the deal as well. But because they didn't win the world um, amateur senior title, they didn't get the and they were in Great Britain. They didn't get nowhere near the deal I got. Yeah, because you were coming. So I know it meant something to be a B champion. You know what I mean, hundred percent. You were coming with all the right credentials, so to speak. You know what I mean. You had titles after your name, and obviously you had the experience. And so then you start saying like the GB pathway and and, and ABA yeah. titles and that. And that's why as well, I think that that's the right time to turn over. What because that's when you yeah. you're still relevant as well. Because yeah. if you can continue boxing, someone else comes along. And they say yeah. you're, it's, you're 
you're not yeah. worth what you were then and then yeah. you're turning yeah. over and you're not going to be getting what you would have been getting yeah. so it's but like strike while yeah. the iron's off yeah. and, and get what you're worth that's what i was thinking at the time but at that time i weren't even starting i only had like five senior fights you know what i mean five mm. senior ABA, aba champion after five senior <laughs> fights it, it, it's sure. made of really no, you know what it's mean? not so it's like i was only starting you know what i mean because you've got so much experience now it's better now for the lads because they have these international uh, boxing tournaments like, mm. what do you call it the monkstown yeah Club the monkstown yeah yeah the uh, harringay box yeah, cup and yeah, all international that experience now it's like alexander DB palace fighting. and all that yeah, yeah. where with then it, you, you never had that but you were getting paid while you were getting you while you were doing your apprenticeship you turned professional five fights but you you're boxing on the big stage you, you're learning the hard way but yeah. you it never saves you wrong because you won 13 fights unbeaten and you were getting paid along the way. And them 13 fights, you would have been putting miles on the clock, Jazz. You never got a fucking penny for them. And then you turned over and then you mightn't have been as relevant and the money mightn't have been the same. So it's all hindsight, yeah. isn't it? You know yeah. what I mean? It's a wonderful yeah. thing. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we, we live and we learn, don't we? You know, and I think, well, it must have been the, the, the right pathway. You went. You, in, so, sorry, you were saying so in, Steve Woods managed me. Yeah, Steve, Steve Woods managed, managed yeah. own bill. Steve Woods was great for me because we used to get on the Ricky Atten shows for a year and then three. Steve Woods, so I was fighting six or seven times a year. You were getting active, and that's pro. what you want, isn't it? In three years, I've done like 18 fights as a professional, which is a lot. A lot, yeah. Wow, that, I mean, it's like every eight weeks or something, I don't even know. Yeah, a lot of pro fighters now get out three times a year and shit like that, don't you? Yeah. And stuff like, you know, if you're getting out that amount of times, 18, you, you, you build, and you, as a fighter, especially in the earlier days, you want to be active, don't you? And if there's journeymen and you want to try and build that bit of a, a following and, yeah. and whatever else, you became English champion in what was the Echo Arena, it's now the MS, obviously on a big home show at a massive venue. What was that like? It was good. It was a great night at this time. I'd met my bed. Um, I must have been about 20. And um, I'm a close relationship with my bed. And, like, she'd been with me all the way from, for, like, all these titles, you know what I mean? To bring, like, your, a, a belt home to you. But when you look at Noah, I'll send you the picture. Been, I took a picture before when my half was. And I looked under the dame. I was looking for a suit. I'm fucking doing oh, come here in a suit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Come here in a whistle and pun, and do, and pun, and the pundit on the zone thing on the weekend. Oh, yeah. I fucking don't know how, yes. but I am. And uh, so I was looking for a suit, and I looked under the thing, and it was like seven something championship belts. And I thought, oh, fucking hell. You know, like one yeah. day, when you win them, you're like, you're over the moon and all that, and now they're just shoved under the thing, you know what I mean? But what they represent is something different to actually what they are, you know what I mean? Mm. So I'll bring them back home to me, bed, oh, we won a title, look, look at this, we won a title. And promoters are buzzing, aren't they? They're just like, yeah, like, I, like, yeah. I got paid, look at me bank. And yeah, you know, like yeah. That. Look, at me, it, yeah. look at me leather and metal, but... It's it more than leather and metal, don't it? Yeah, to me, it was everything. Blood uh, and we it, Yeah, we done it together, me and me bed. It was just like, say, we keep me, me circle short and... Um, just my family. Work-life balance is very, very hard as a fighter. I was going to touch it on the end, but I just feel it's relevant now. Obviously, you've got a family, you've got a missus, and that's grown yeah. over the time. You've built a family while you've been a boxer. But it's very, very hard, and it doesn't anyone from the outside looking in. Like, if you're going to be a boxer, it's your life, isn't it? Like, it's yeah. And you've got to be dedicated to it, and yeah. you're training twice a day, and... You know, every day you might have a, have a blow on the weekend, or I don't know what your cycle or system is, but it's it, it, a lot of fighters. You train two times a day, mm. you know, and then when your family is sitting there eating what they want, you're not and stuff like that. Or are you? Are you all right like that? Do you right get away now, with what you're eating? I'm all right now. So, what? I, what after the fight, I used to go even after the weigh-in the day before weigh-in, I'd go to curry house and I'd be eating curry after the weigh-in. I'd be eating nothing for two days and then going to curry house and the next minute I'm, I'm I had about I must have five fights, food poisoned, professional fights. I used to go there with my belly hanging over my shorts, thinking, but I sort of felt like extended and thought if I get it, yeah, wow, but I couldn't help it. I was like a dog, no one you put food in a dog's bone, you can't stop. So I developed, I no paddy the body the way he is with the food. Yeah, he's just I, up and down, up and down, up and down, and he. I was in back then. I was in with the sweets back then. I, I put on crazy amounts of weight, but I didn't do it on the internet. I done it in, in the dark room on the sly. You know what I mean? I used to say to my bed, "Come on, if you go for something to eat." She come on, what are you going to be eating in the kitchen on the way? And we get in the car and we go for something to eat. And then on the way home, she says, "We get a machine for the way home." Like, oh, I'm full, and I get a cup on with her because she's not in the yeah, like, 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 eating partner like this. <laughs> 
That was just the way I grew up. And me, my Harvard. Do you ever mm-hmm. have food guilt, Jazz? No, when you're eating something. Yeah. Well, it's only so I had to start a program. It, it, there's it's an anonymous program. <laughs> Sounds fucking <laughs> mad. But I was addicted to food. I was addicted to sugar. <laughs> and the lockdown came. Like, I can't go into this lockdown. I'll be 55 stone by the time I come out. Was the serious life thing, was hell. Don't be moving like this. He's pouring his heart out. I was like, I'm fucking. I was a mess. I was fucking. It's funny, though, isn't it? Yeah. I think it is funny. I was a fucking mess. I was like eating so much. I was, uh, when <laughs> I see you feeding them pigeons, the bread right on the docks, I thought that's went down fast. Fucking eating it all, weren't you, cunt? <laughs> so it was only sweet, you know. So in a program like that, you have to figure out what's damaging for you. So you eat some food, some food is like an addiction. You cannot stop eating it. So like I got, <laughs> I remember going to the shop getting. I remember in the car with my mum one night and eating four magnums. <laughs> <laughs> in the box for magnums and go let's just do a bounce here and go back to the shop and get some more magnums because I couldn't stop eating them and I went oh, I'm I can't stop doing this one it's like it's got me by the throat so I turned them out the window <laughs> and before I got back home lads I'd been back to the shop and got more magnums than I mean that's just that way like he read so like it just fucks you up so I'd be up all night eating the next day I've got to make weight so I'm running 12 miles just to get the weight off and it's just messing me back in the morning. <laughs> so I can't just keep on doing Go this. Go shop on the way back. Yeah, and then the kids are saying, Daddy, what time, what time are you getting up? And I'm like, I'm not getting up. So as soon as I get up, I'm going to go in the fridge, you know what I mean? So it's like, like, like I'm on the, like I'm on the beat. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm snorting Magnum, you know what I mean? <laughs> snorting kids in Buenos. <laughs> but, but my life is a mess because we have to, three and a half years, I haven't had a sweet for three and a half have years. You? No. So we have to, but I don't miss it because... <laughs> you know what it does to you? Yeah, well, it was one to two many thousands ever enough. Yeah, so it is, isn't it? That's where I am. I've stuff. never ever, in all the time, I've heard people come on and say, oh, it was bad on the Charlie, or it was bad on the Zinc, and, uh, and you can't look at a whisper gold. Fucking bad. So, so when my man's, I used to go and get paid, lad, they used to say, they get the gear, and they say to me, do you want a cake? That's how it's like, <sighs> I didn't know that's how it's, I was getting my fix as well, you know what I mean? It's like, that, mm. <laughs> it was the three of us, it was just the three of us, lad, I'm fucked on the cake. <laughs> Oh, I, used have a, I used to have a cake dealer and he used to come in the house. <laughs> <laughs> he used to come in the house with one of each. He used to pull him out and leave a man's bar and switch. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> Went off there tonight. Oh, I lad, it was boss. It's fucking carry on. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Just so winning the belts anyway, lads, winning the belts was fucking great, yeah. So, so we just, in, but in, in between I started, like, just eating too much go. So in between fights, because there's more time between amateur fights, I used to lose a stone every week on the GB team, go home, stone, eight days later, be back there, see, I did the fuck, because I was losing weight like that. That's the way I was living on Great Britain. And then I turned professional, I'm not going to fight for another eight weeks, so. You had bigger periods of time. Yeah. So, so you could fuck around more. Yeah, so I'm going bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm. Mad. and obviously it weren't serving you and then you're trying to get back down so you're just making it harder for yourself because yeah. you've, you're in this constant fucking battle and it's hard yeah. enough on its own then you get a day before weighing I'm getting drier and drier and drier yeah so because you know it. you've got time to, 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 to rehydrate yeah. what do you think you'd have well, you have something oh, and yeah. you thought you were but you weren't rehydrating in the right way because when you were getting when you were rolling out of there you were going down to east as east and <laughs> fucking having two fucking <laughs> madrasses <laughs> and just rolling in there <laughs> to do the fucking business where like obviously you should have been putting it back in in the right way but you yeah. were just going mad I didn't up. know to be feel like back then you think about the nutrition the strength like the strength condition no now nutrition it weren't like that you know it's mad out now maybe it's, it's, it was it's, Maybe not for me though, you know. I don't think it was. I think it's be it's become more people have become more and more conscious of nutrition now. People yeah. have become more and because of media again, it's fads and you know there's there's um there's a place for nutrition and a lot of people follow it and it's like anything sports evolving because of it because more people are making bigger lads are making lighter weights and stuff and it's like if you don't get with the program yeah it's gonna become hard yeah. so you've got to the short and no choice yeah. where years ago it's like. If you're eating something solid and healthy, you're all right, you know what I mean? And if not, swear meals a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you really wanted to make weight, it's fucking white meat and veg and that's you, lad. Just get involved, you know, and, and that's I that. I didn't even know that. I used to eat Farley's Brusks, fucking baby biscuits. What? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I, used else, eat, I used to eat fucking Farley's baby biscuits <sighs> for me dinner, lad, because they, they weighed nothing. 
Wow. And I'd eat so 150. I can tell you now what it is. 69 calories per one. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking nine of them in the box. And the box weighs 150 gram. I used to have it with 150 ml of milk. And you should think that weighs 0.3. Now that's my dinner. Wow. And so it starts out at half and I'll have five and then I'd go, oh, fucking hell, I still want this foot in the box. No, this is the kitchen starting, just foot in the box, just foot in the box, just foot in the box. Next minute I'm running back down. <laughs> the co op lads are getting more boxes of rusks. You know what I mean? They just had ch- <laughs> just this fucking big bowl of chicken and veg. <laughs> it's mad. It's a distorted mentality. <laughs> oh, lads, you made me laugh, you know. Um, watch it. <laughs> Your own batter when you became English champion. What's it like boxing on a stage like that in our own town, Josh? Give me all the feels. You know what I mean? You're out there. I've seen videos of you like going in like the Echo Arena on busy nights and, you know, before you go out and like at the end there and all it, the gaff round and you, you can get that vibe. And I'm thinking, wow, what's that like, lad? What does it feel like? Yeah, it's good. Like, yeah. Um, special, really, because without, without it, it's dangerous for your ego. If that makes sense, because you can feed into it a bit too much. Too much I've yeah. seen fighters go, this is me, this is fucking my shit, oh, and all that, and yeah. by me. But it's a special moment where there's like, it's a dream come true in a way that <laughs> you've actually made a dream come true. I used to walk past it when it first got built, when it was the Echo, and say, I'm going to box in there one day, mum. And then when you are fighting in there and you're winning titles in there, it's a dream that you created in your mind long before coming through. So it's a special little thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, you've visualised that for so long yeah. and you've worked towards that for so long. And to go, yeah. Like if you went into town now and we stood outside the Echo Arena and you looked up at it, look at that, for a venue and you're yeah. in there and you're boxing jazz, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like... Yeah, with, with the ego, there's two different stories. So you can say with the ego, now can put it all over me into the ground and everyone will think good of me, blah, blah, blah. But then you can say, oh, I told me, man, I was going to do that. And it, it fucking worked out. It's what it meant off. to you. Yeah, and then little victories like that, they're they what I live for. You <laughs> know what I mean? Not the limelight or not like that, the little inside. It's more and what it could, means to yeah. you, though, Jazz, as well. Because, yeah. like, that Instagram and that, it just fills a void for a very small fucking period of time. But it's so much more meaningful and so yeah. much more whole, yeah. wholesome when you do something that really fed your soul. And obviously, you've dedicated your whole life to boxing from 13 years of age right the way through. So when you do get them moments, the massive milestones, yeah. they're not stepping stones, they're Mind milestones. Stones, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're major milestones in, in, in your career. Yeah, and you don't last long. You just move on then. But the, it's mad, isn't it? Get them the your kit is sick, lad. Your kit is sick. <laughs> Yeah. The Warriors. The Warriors come out to play. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> shit. Is it with all like the writing, the blood and that, the vest and that, it, the, the, the waistcoat? It's sick, lad. Where did you get the idea? What made you think, like, you know what? I'm on the Warriors jacket. When I was about 17, I used to knock around in Netherly. We made John Ed, always professional boxing now. Um, I used just to watch the film The Warriors. It was a boss. I, it, it's a shit film, but it's a boss, boss film, isn't it? Yeah. It's like a cult classic, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I was looking on eBay, like, so I, when I first came professional, I said they didn't know me weird, like um, imposter syndrome going on, and I used to get me wages and just go, right, what can I fucking buy with this? I'm going to waste this as fast as I can, so I'd just be on eBay or whatever, or like online shopping or going to fucking cricket or, no, like just that yeah, balance. Just doing, just, yeah. But I was just subconsciously scared of having money because I'd never had it. Yeah, I thought, you didn't know what to do with it. Are you shooting that? For me to be have this drive and success, and, like this drive to get success, I need to stay hungry. So I associated being hungry with being skinned and having fuck all. So I used to blow my money because of thought. If I've got money, I'll hunger. lose the hunger, yeah. Yeah. My having Agla said it's hard to fucking get off for your runs yeah. when you're sleeping in silk pajamas. I really believe that until someone said to me, so you can't say now with money in your bank. And I went, oh my God, <laughs> you're fucking right. Of course you can't, you know what I mean? And, but then I thought, wow, i I never seen it like that. But I realised it was my own defects, what was leading me to self-destruct, if that makes sense. So I've always been like that. Get a bit too successful. Fucking sort of destroy myself, know what I mean? So I, what, I get a bit of the sickest kit I can yeah, buy. Yeah. You see me on the zone on, on the weekend, pundit, and I'll probably say something about the fucking trans kids in school <laughs> with the kids, know what I mean? Just to ruin everything for myself, get myself <laughs> blacklisted, sort of thing. So it's just the way it am, right? <laughs> just, I'm going to ruin this. I, I feel I'll, this I'll, feels I'll, good. I'm going to blow it. Yeah. <laughs> Self sabotage. People do that. I do have been in it for years, so uh, I was on eBay and I just found it on there. I thought, that's a real jacket, that, that looks like a proper j- <laughs> real genuine leather. I'm going to laugh that. I ordered it because I'm going to book, I'm going to go out and just, obviously people say, fuck off, you can't be walking. And it's that your same jacket, Charles, have you stuck with that from yeah, day one? Yeah. No, that's the one. 
How about that? Since the English fight, title fight, yeah, probably a like, ten fights in, bro. Well, twenty five fights in there. Special lad, innit? I, I love you, Kurt lad, because obviously it's got like the Sam on the Warriors and yeah. your t-shirts are sick. You could sell them t-shirts, John. <laughs> you could lad, the sick with all the fucking badge on them and all that. I want one. Sorry. Fucking. Better <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next time. Yeah, better lad, lad. No, <laughs> fight, fighting in March, fighting about six weeks away, fighting in Malta in six weeks. So, sure. Okay. Oh, hey. Um, shy kids don't get sweet and all that. You've got to ask, lad. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. You got your shot at the Lonsdale British title, which happened to be against Kid Galahad in an absolute ding dong. It was a great fight. And he caught you with a big backhand in in, in the tent. Um, I remember watching the fight. How did you feel in terms of the aftermath, Jazz? How did you deal with that? Fucking in one word, um, suicidal. In one word, the shame. The shame that comes over. I was talking to Derry about this yesterday. This when you lose the shame, it's just unreal. I was supposed to fight Kigala for the English title. The fight before it, I want to fight John Fernandez. Mm. The boarded um, prepares himself for the. The English title against me and Galad, and he was smarter. He, they'd been around the business a long time. My team, we were fresh in the game. We just wanted the success now. And he knew, bit of money, a little bit later on. Yeah, they were smarter. We ended up fighting for the world title. You know what I mean? We'll come to that, we'll come to that, we'll so come to that. So if you look at it like that, I think, wow, bloody hell. We didn't, we didn't need to fight at that point, but... Had you never been also it? did. Had you never been it like that, Josh? i never been down, no. never been down in my life. i never lost two seconds of it a count. A- it was, he was southpaw and he could get out he's like, switch you, it, yeah. switch it, he hit you with a left hand, no, it was a backhand, but it was a left hand, when yeah. it right over the top, bang. I don't know, I don't know, you tell me. That's what you It was a bit of pill to swallow as well, because it was a good fight, weren't it, lads, do you know what I mean? so tired. So tired, like I've never been. It, it went one way traffic though, was it, Jazz? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like Kit Galahad was rated and you're rated, you put him saying it went a one way street, lad, was it? It was it was it was to and fro, it was a it was a fight. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I you know what? I same again when I say about the nutrition, I just had a fight against um I had a fight about maybe nine weeks before or yeah. something like that. I went to Egypt in my bed and I'm eating. Eating and eating and eating. I got the call, you've got to fight here in eight weeks. It's going to pay us, but you're fighting in eight weeks. My first thought was, so I've got seven weeks now, seven and a half weeks to go. What I'll do is I'll go and eat as much as I can and start Monday. You know what I mean? That was my mentality because I was so scared of not eating. Like the addiction was telling me, I was so scared of not eating. When I got home, I was like two stone overweight with seven weeks to go. I had to lose a tremendous amount of weight. Got down to the weight just about. You're fighting the scales, aren't you? Before the fucking before before you're fighting yeah. the opponent, because in your mind you just got that much anxiety building onto the fight. You thinking I've got to make weight, I've got to make weight, I've got to make yeah. weight, and and then you finally fucking get there. It's like yeah, now now you've got to deal with him. I've done all the cans and I didn't lost fights by doing all the can and I could live with myself, but I still I still 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 eats me now about that when I lost two in the second time, beat me fair and square. We'll come to that in a second. But that one always eats me up because of course, first time. I didn't have to didn't Lad, have it understand in myself. I just I was too young and immature and it cost me big time. But, but as we, well we were both of young fighters of the year. Then. How you performed as well, Jazz, didn't reflect the story you've just told me there because you were you were in that fight, lad, at hundred percent. And I'm not just saying that because you're in the chair, I'd be like, You got smoked, I'll tell you, but you you know it and I know it. You you, you were well in well in there. But that's boxing for you. <laughs> Take it, don't you? And move on, yeah. No one's there. I like, you, like I say, I don't like sympathy and stuff like that. No one's interested in, in the excuses. I'm not saying the excuses for for me to, ah, to glorify d- myself. I'm not saying these excuses to to show kids you won't get away with. How ah, did you deal with the suicidal feel? Just did, just did, just back on the horse. Yeah, just fucking. Yeah. Just, you moved. Just redeem myself. So then after that, you I, moved on, and you continued on the path you were bound couple of fights later, yeah. the opportunity knocked again and yeah. the British title was presented again. This time things turned out a bit differently because you beat Josh Well with a unanimous decision, didn't you? Yeah. And finally got you that. that belt as well is the belt that it's a prestigious belt and it's like I say once again, I'm not the fucking like the ABA final, they probably think you prick once again, <laughs> I mean, but the world title is me my goal. There's it, a lot I of a stepping stone. It's a whole lot belt as well. Not yeah. the British title. Physically older than your hand. 
it's got a lot of weight in it, and it, yeah. and it does. It's heavy. a heavy belt. Everyone says that, don't they? I remember Callum Smith won it. I was, I was. This was when I was in that like transition between like going to find another gym and training them the Sunday for a little bit. When Callum Smith won that belt, I was there then, and um, I remember he come in the gym, and he was like, "Yeah," and I, and he got a picture with me with the belt on, me and our Callum, <laughs> and, <laughs> and the, and the weight in the belt, I was shocked. Yeah. No, when I put it over my shoulder, metal, isn't it? Pff, Real like, metal. yeah, it's it's heavy, and I was like, "Whoa!" But that's like. That's the belt so at that at domestic level. That's the belt he wants in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you you won that. Yeah, it was a redemption. F- it's no no le- leather on the belt, is he? No, it's no metal. Uh, it's metal. Lad. Yeah. So yeah, don't worry more about that. But yeah, as a redem- redemption for me, that fight. Um, I've done everything the same. So the same place where I lost to Gala, I, I, I died to, tremendous, tremendously for that fight. I've done everything perfect and. Um, even to the place now when you go for your, after your way and you go for something to eat mm. same place everything done everything the same because I needed to redeem myself was there a cloud over it for you Josh in a way of like in your wall. in your mind something could happen here just something could happen because of what had happened with Galahad because you've done everything exactly the same step by step and you never changed nothing in your head did you just think to yourself like this better go fucking right was there any doubts was there any doubts walking to the ring was there any doubts in where I'd, I'd surmise leading up to the Galahad fight before that outcome important outcome of being the same you'd say you boxed you won you'd say yeah. you boxed you won it's all you knew yeah it's changed you being beat and it's like horrible to deal with you've had to get back on the horse you've had about to and now you're just reliving this same fucking thing you've got boxing for the same belt the only difference is the opponents yeah. was the st- that fucking doubt in your mind pressure there was pressure there like but I wouldn't put I wouldn't put that much, I wouldn't put external pressure on myself. I don't believe in that. Like mm-hmm. I say, I'm normally normally max flat with me half of that. That's mm-hmm. how I see it. You know what I mean? So I, I don't put that external pressure on myself. But subconsciously, I think it has showed in my performances since the Galata fight. It took me a long time to get back to confidence, fighting, fighting yeah. with a bit of flair or a bit of. Um, Take some fighters don't come back from broken no, punches like that. Lad. Hard. In Never. my mind, there was a mental, there was a mental brick wall in front of me, and I needed to smash every brick. It was like physically, I, I, I created a picture in my own mind, this mental wall, and I had to get rid of every single brick. I couldn't go round the wall, or couldn't get over the wall. I had to take every brick down. If that makes sense, it was so like I that's how I seen it in my own mind. That's how I painted the picture to get through it. I thought I can't have no fucking remnants of, of a wall when, when I move on. I don't want that. I don't want that lingering over me. You know what I mean? So I have to put everything right. I felt like I redeemed myself. It was nice to them. What the belt represented on me. Mm. I had to go back home. A lot of fighters don't family. don't come again after after shots like that and stuff like that. They're never, they're never the same. Yeah. So that's a massive, massive thing. Who inspires you as a fighter? Or whose styles, uh, like any greats you've watched over the years or looked up to jazz or modelled yourself on a little bit or that, is there any you could say, like, love them, lad, or... I love the mentality of Marvin Agler. Mentality-wise, not boxing-wise. Like, uh, I'm not a, to be honest, I'm not, Jack, I'm not a boxing fan. I'm not, I, don't, I don't watch boxing and stuff like that. If I see it, I see it. If I go, I go, but I'm not, not interested in watching boxing. I mean, I'd you just want to box? Like, uh, um, I love the mentality of Marvin Agler. I what? don't believe in idols. Yeah, yeah, you're not that way I out. Don't believe in that. Some people do, but model themselves on certain fights. It yeah. takes to someone Dan inspired Aziz them. Is Marvin Agler? Isn't he? Have you seen, have you seen it? Mm-hmm. I, lo- I, 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 I love watching it because I love Marvin Agler. You know what I mean? But but some fight you just model themselves. Don't you get Ben Whitaker? Lad, it's a bit like Naz- obviously he's slightly different, but like Nas, you can see Nazim in, in yeah. Whitaker a lot. You know yeah. what I mean? Fighters look at other fighters and go, yeah, fuck, oh, would like a like a slice of that, yeah. and take a little bit from each fighter. You know it's what I mean? It works, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you know, talking of greats, your box Rigandal, what an incredible fighter, Rigandal, Rigandal. Fight, yeah. He had 475 fights and lost 12 as an amateur, won two Olympic gold, did he, yeah? won two Olympic <laughs> gold. I wish they had told me before the fight. <laughs> like, he won two Olympic gold medals back to back, 2000, 2004, and he won 16 gold medals in like major international tournaments. Wow. He's one of the greatest I didn't know all this. Like, Lad, he's one of the greatest ever amateur boxers to live. Like I, I used to watch him. Our coach used to send, say, watch this fellow when you go home. YouTube just come about then. <laughs> Kevin Smith used to tell us to watch him and I used to think, no, I'm not watching him. I'll fucking beat him one day. That's what I used to say to myself when I was a kid and stuff. Yeah. Used to, I'd never be him on the PlayStation because he used to know. Was it him? 
Who we told you to go and watch? Yeah, yeah. I used to say no. I want to, want to beat him. You know what I mean? But I never. It's <laughs> long story short. Simo, when he'd be coaching me, he'd show me like this little step across, like stepping across with your front foot, stepping over the other side, and he'd call it the rig and doll, give him a little rig and doll, step across there, boom, bang, and then throw the back hands over. Was, he, was, it, <laughs> was that the one he knew? Yeah. <laughs> the jazzy shot the he jazz. called it. He'll go out. <laughs> but, like, What's it feel like to have sharing a ring with someone like that? that? That that ability, that level, you know? I wish I could answer you now, you're asking me, because I know what you're saying, what's it like? Because I can tell you, you'll you have my other fella, but just the same as any other fella, you know what I mean? That's obviously him, just another fella. And it, in my head, he was a target, because I always seen him as this fella who I'm going to beat, you know what I mean? From early on. Could you feel the levels, Jazz, when you were in there? Um, it didn't last long, did it? No, long. but for the yeah. time you were in there, you know yourself when you're in, when, when you're in the ring with another man, no matter yeah. what, does that like sort of, I'd say first 30 seconds, you can feel it, like, yeah. well, who's got well, the upper hand here. Yeah. out was strength in his hands, no, no need to guard, and, the, and sometimes you get the gloves in the red, still flies back. He had solid arms, I took that from, I remember thinking, that's that's something I'm going to take that afterwards, that was so, solid, that, and his head movements, I remember thinking, I'm going to catch you, and I missed him, but his head movements, didn't have the glove, glove on him. And, you, uh, put, you put you put you put fucking think you there's um, substance in your shots, jazz in there. When you put them together, lad, you put them together well, and you you step into the punches sometimes, and that you powerful. You, you do. In my head, I thought he's, in my head, I was going in saying he's chinny. You know what I mean? Saying that he fucking broke my jaw, snapped my jaw clean off. <laughs> you, clean what? off. It come off. It was dangling, and and he was shooting pain going up behind my eyeball. I remember thinking, oh, fucking hell, because you feel numb when you're fighting, do you? Sometimes numb. you can feel numb, good, nice, numb. And this one, it was just a shooting pain, like um, behind my eyeball. So that's something serious that. But I knew my jaw was hanging off because I couldn't lift, you can um, you can just close your mouth and you can give yourself instruction, instruction or what. And I couldn't, I couldn't lift it, I couldn't lift my chin up to shut my lips. If that makes sense, so it was just hanging and he jabbed me in it. And I just pushed my chin into my neck. And I'm thinking, oh, and that's when the shooting pain started to happen. My coach just said, um, is your jaw right? I said, it's fucked. And um, the referee was not lingering there with that, and he said, um, he said, I'm going to pull the fight. And it's just fucking devastating, because it's a world, it's a world title opportunity, the first one, I mean, remember getting a call, me, me and McGarry when I was off the road, and I remember thinking, wow, fucking hell, yes, it's happening. Now. It's happening, this is I it, now. I knew it was him, I knew it was meant to be against him, you know what I mean, all these years. <laughs> Oh, the rush, Jack. No, when you get no, like, no, when you get the call, do you want to fight for a world title? I had this question for you later on, but please tell me now. It's like, how does the call come in for something like that? That who is it on the other end of the phone? Is it your trainer? Is it the promoter? Is it your manager? Who phoned you? First time was me managing Anto Fitz, Fitz uh, from Ireland. Um, the second time was Tony Bellew. Man, because I'm always on the bug. When it comes in, I'm always on the bug. After the shite, all this piss. And I... <laughs> but what's it, it like, Josh? Your head fall fight. off when they say to no, you. It's like, it's like, um, it's just relief. And I wouldn't know, like a 90, like a 95 minute winner. Not like you're watching someone score the 95 minute winner in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a final. And you just, you go, you lose everything. You're trying to keep it together, but you're just gone. You're so it's a, you're lazy, aren't you? yeah. It's so good. It's just you fought a lad. Just blah. so good. I got not long ago into Lee Wood for the, for the world title. This is nothing to do with you won't yeah. you won't know this question, so I'm not doing the, the future of the podcast. No, it's all right. Um, Barry Fomey was in Wales and I'm just coming out of a fair with the kids, and he said, "Do you want to Lee Wood fight in six weeks or something like that?" It was, and um, I fucking. Yeah, I don't know if he, what he thought I was saying because I just went quiet. Because I'm looking around, thinking, I can't, I can't lose it yet. You know what I mean? Because I'm in public, and he put the phone down, and I just walk. I said, "Give me a bit the key, the kid, get in the car with the kids." And she went in the car, and I would walk behind this wagon, and I just screamed as loud as I could. You know what I mean? I just fucking screamed like we just won the World Cup final in the ninety fifth minute. And, there's, there's that feeling when they go back to the car she went you alright <laughs> he's, he's never believed what's just happened he's just had a fucking bar of chocolate to shop he's had a shit behind that wagon <laughs> and um, the fight never ends up happening he pulled out or what but, yeah, you boxed Lee Wood didn't you yeah that was years after this this, but, this but that was just, yes. just recently when he got that call so so good same, same with Josh Wanton got Josh Wanton to call 
if you, this was last year. Seen you looking for him under the bridge, lad. Yeah, so the same. Where are you, Josh? <laughs> same thing, man, same thing. I, as soon as I went home, I ran the fastest time I've ever run. Ever, on a, on a five mile run, you know what I mean? Because you're just, just so happy. Yeah. Mm. I didn't know I ran that fast, but you just start happy, you know what I mean? Amazing, isn't it? Sorry, like, back to Do the you point. think, like, no, when you get your hand raised, just does that feeling? Is it like that, but better? It's not like that, it's better for me anyway. Yeah. It's not. Is it your best feeling, like, they're the, they're, they're the calls you box for? It's That's what you're coming for. to put it against for me, you know what I mean? You can't compare it. So when you have a kid, like... Different feeling. When you have a child, anyone can have a child, can't you? Not because it's easy. I believe it's the most blessed thing in the world, and it's a different feeling, but... You only have to have sex. Do you know what I mean? You didn't create nothing. You didn't do it yourself. You weren't in control. It just happened to you in a way, didn't it? I yeah. Mean, you were blessed. You, you got given that. You've got to kind of force its hand yeah. with what you're doing, lad. You've yeah. got to keep working at it and working at it and yeah. fucking make it happen. And it's like you thought it was going to happen, but didn't. Well, we'll keep going. We'll keep yeah. going. And then that call yeah. comes in. It's like. And it's, it's, it's happened. So many rejections. And so many setbacks yeah. and stuff like That's that. That's when it comes. And there's a relief element to it. It's so good. Yeah. When you box Lee Wood. You won the European title at your hall. That was in a golden contract, weren't it? Yeah. Unbelievable fight. Showed great testament to your character, that jazz, because it looked tough in there. And you were definitely the A-side. You were just putting loads of pressure on him. Like before, when I said, you like to get behind your shots and that. You could fucking see that. You would just have that jab like a probe and slamming that backhand downstairs. It was working the street, yeah, weren't yeah. it? And little moments. And I think it was the back end of the night. You caught him with a big shot. Yep. Yeah. Fucking and he was uh, he was like Bambi on ice lad. He was all yeah. over the place, weren't he? But to be fair as well, he um, showed resilience, didn't he? Because he, he fucking stayed in the fight yeah. and he come back. Yeah. And, what a fight, lad! Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant fight. Yeah. Um, again, another massive night. Like yeah. I, I, I looked at your career and I'm just going to myself. This fellas had fucking low. Like they're like they're the pinnacle of some people's career. That was it. You about pinnacle, fucking pinnacle, pinnacle. Come on, on Josh. No. <laughs> tell you what your pinnacle is, don't you? But I always believe your best days are always at Eddie, you know what I mean? 100%, yeah. But I mean, like, you've had so many high points or so many, like, like top moments, if you know what I'm trying yeah. to say, throughout your career. So the downs must have been massive, but your ups have also been massive. And, like, just looking back now, even talking to you over your career, you've won an English title, British title, European title... Well, title, you know, you've 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 won you've won everything, haven't you, Josh? You know what I mean? There's there's nothing more you like you can no, do in that sense. Not not many people can do it without the televised promoter. Do you know what I mean? That's the thing. That's the difference. Sometimes, like having a TV promoted, people will back you. But when you forward your way without the televised promoter, fighters will know it's a lot. Do you think if you were obviously the likes of Eddie Hearn or someone like that on board with you, Josh? The, the, the path yeah. would have been so much yeah. faster. Easier. I'm fighting on other people's channels, you know what I mean? As the away fighter. If that fight there with Lee Wood, I was under the... Yeah, in, you're on the road, bit. your yeah. hall. What's the atmosphere like in your hall, lad? Good, it was good in there. Looks heavy. Uh, when you fight, I've seen a fella put the thing on Instagram the other day, he rolls under the ropes, you can hear the crowd, he rolls... Have you seen it? No. He rolls under the ropes, and when he puts his head in the ring, it's silent. He rolls it back out, and he can hear all the crowd, and it's yeah. silent. But the, um, when I watch it back, the atmosphere... Maybe you're feeling you pick on it, but not really. You know what I mean? As, as you know, when you're fighting, you're fighting. Aren't that's you? a very good question that I wanted to ask you. Does that ever change? Do you know the way, like, if you're fighting in the fucking Dockers Club or you're fighting wherever, you, when you walk into the ring, it's noisy. It's yeah. like there's a big vacuum of noise, lad, and you can hear everyone, they're all chatting, shouting, yeah. and that. And then when you get in there, it's like a weird silence. It's like you can hear everything externally, but you can't really. It's just you and it's him in it, you know what yeah. I mean? And you might hear the odd little fucking line. Yeah. Like so, fucking someone shout it, fucking kill him. I've, got a, cousin, I've got a cousin and he doesn't shout advice, he just shouts swear words at <laughs> Joey. And he's fucking, and I'm thinking, what's next here? Is he going to say something? <laughs> well, you don't hear much. Is that the same, Jazz, no matter where you've boxed or what the level is? Or like if they are big events, if they yeah. are arenas and that. Yeah, because after the Rigondo fight, I went out to America to uh, fight. I fought in, I went to America fight, fighting for the 50 game and I went to Dominican Republic. And you get around, don't you? I've seen that. It was just not much coming, you know what I mean? So we had to, had to make it, we had to forge it, you know what I mean? I went to, I went to America with nothing, 26 quid, Jack. Just 26 quid, that's all I had. I had nothing else, 26 quid, you know what I mean? Like I was saying earlier, when, you, when your coaches and stuff like that are, 
uh, running your career as a manager, I should have been progressed slower than that. I shouldn't be fighting with Rondo for a world title for shit money just because everyone wants the accolades right now. Does that make sense? I do. I I want it right now. So that's what but I said earlier about why, Ricky. Yeah. Bit soon. Yeah. So, like, if I was my own manager then and he understood what he understand now, it'd be different. But it weren't because I was learning on the job and saying pro so young. So I don't regret it. You know what I mean? Just learn from it. But what I would appreciate a bit more if someone, if the people in boxing give you the time to grow and learn in your time rather than writing it off when you lose, if that makes sense. Because it's for their narrative, lad. It's 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 like if he boxes him now and he wins, we get paid massive. If he loses, we still get paid. But they're trying to even they might even get paid big money now. But it's like if he wins this, he's world champion. If he beats Dick and Dow, and then we're on the scene and we're all getting paid and blah blah blah. Yeah. So they're not thinking about the growth of you as a as a human being, as an individual and as a boxer. It's like yeah, it's a bit soon that so when that call come in, maybe you shouldn't have been yeah. fucking on the dock celebrating. Yeah. Someone well, could have protected actually, you and went, Listen, nah, yeah. that fight's not for us right now well the conversation with Ansel Fitz he said I said to him I said yeah 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 of course yeah and then I phoned back again and said well how much is it for after it <laughs> and then phoned back five, again. Eh? You just went, yeah. yeah and then I phoned back a while after I think it was about a week I said what do you think actually because didn't even think to mention Ansel me at manager you know what I mean which is selfish and he said well I don't think you should I think you should wait <laughs> And I didn't want to hear that, you know what I mean? Yeah, and no one wants to hear that, Jazz, but that's where, like, maybe if you were a manager in the future and, you know, a call come in like that for another fight, yeah. you could phone me and go, hey, Jack, look, this is the conversation that just been out, but I'm just telling you now, don't get too excited. This is my advice to yeah. you. If I, I've got to tell you, because yeah. it's part of my job, but if it was me, I think we should wait a little bit, lad. These opportunities yeah. will come again, and next time they'll come for better money and we'll be a little bit more ready, a little yeah. bit further down the line. Yeah. You know, but I've just got to tell you that there, but I yeah. don't think it's that. I, my I, I, job to tell I, you. I, it's my job to tell you that I don't think it's right for us. Yeah. It's up to you, yeah. sleep on it. Bang, I've been one in of them. situations now with John Ed Edo, who we'll manage. I've been in that situation now. John Edo, you went out to uh, Miami with him, didn't you? Yeah. So, I, I, we had a situation like that then, so we turned up for the way in, and his opponent didn't turn up, didn't turn up, and then another fella's opponent didn't turn up, and then this fella's about two, two or three weeks above Edo, and goes... That's not what I can do yeah. Just travel from Liverpool now. We're, we're, we're Atlanta, we was. Mm. And the fella said, hey, but you, you two can fight each other if you want. And I just had to take the, the lead. The Edo, Edo said, yeah, all right. <laughs> the fuck off? You messing on it? He said, no, fuck off. Give us fucking feedback about we paid to go on the show. You messing on it? We're not for tea or nothing. And then Chris Glover got us a show in, in, a t in Del Rey, Orlando, two days later. Seen him in the fucking in the American shorts and not the create jobs and that yeah, lad, yeah. and that coming down Brilliant. the state looks sick. Yeah, great, and nice, great experience. Talking back to sacrifice and dedication as well. When they all went out on the booze, you went for the run, didn't you, Jazz? Did I that night? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I seen a video of you yeah. up there and then you were like, I'm out running, I've just got doing what Jazz does, I've just got back to the hotel doing <laughs> that. Not bad. Yeah, but it's <laughs> sacrifice, lad, and it's, jobs weird. Yeah, and it's dedication yeah. and that's. And that's what it's all about. Seeing you by a uh, Scarface, the stairs and all that, on the yeah. set and all that. Yeah. And the Belray Beach gym. Belray, lovely Del place. Yeah. Wow, lad, wow. what was that really? like? So nice. I what never knew it was there when I was, in, when I was in Miami a few years before it. I didn't know that Del Rey was just up the road. But it's just a different, it's Not a different special. world. It's for like for people who got a few quid, know what I mean? could see that. I was, <laughs> I was in the hostel on the South Beach. I, I was went, about I to went say, welcome up there, you know. <laughs> My man's rolled up with 26 <laughs> nicks the first time. <laughs> Much different the second time. <laughs> I couldn't even fucking afford the, the grey arms train up to tell Ray the first time. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it mad as well, Jazz, with all what you'd done with boxing, all where you'd been, you know, winning British titles, European titles, and you've got 26 quid in your pocket on the fucking way to America, lad. Mad. People should assume yeah. you've got money and yeah. you've got it boxed on that. Yeah. But, but no, box, I don't know. I can't, I boxing can't. is not like that though either, is it? Well, there's some people in boxing who can you can do a lot more with the money because they've got advice to do something with the money. I didn't understand how to... Um, Manage it? Yeah, I didn't understand how to work finances. I weren't taught that. We're not taught finances in school. My mum and dad never did not think about finances. So it was like, what, what, what are you supposed to know? Later on after my career, when I met Tony Belly, we started to give me good advice and good guidance, Georgie Vaughan and Derry. So what you need to start to do is put your money into properties and stuff like that. So with other persons, I've done better. 
later on. Now I can't keep on using that excuse. I didn't know about finances, you know what I mean? At the start, I didn't, but now I do. So I can say I blew a lot of money. I had a lot of good times. I was kind to a lot of people, which feels better than fucking buying anything done for yourself. 100% given is better than receiving, isn't it? Yeah, and that, that's just the way it was. We're, we're being money back then, but I know when, when you have kids, life changes, don't you? You have to start thinking about your kids and stuff. If you had a message out there to anyone looking to become a boxer, what would your message be to them, Josh? Fucking hell. It's not going to be nice, but if you're going to be number two, don't even bother. There's no place in number two in boxing. It's harsh, but it's true. You know I mean? I'm not saying that from a bitter standpoint. I'm saying that from a sex success standpoint. You're going to be sitting there number two watching the number one. You'll turn bitter. And you're not going to be... You're not going to be getting no rewards for number two. There's no number two. It's the same as number 99. Just fucking don't bother. You know what I mean? If you're going to be good, be good. Go all in. If you're not going to be all in, just do it as a hobby, but don't, don't commit your life to it because it's just too hard, too hard, you know? It's a hard, hard But it's sport. also well worth it when you win. When you when you are going to be committed, it's well worth it. The effort comes back tenfold. But if you half arse it, it's... You can't half arse it because it's a lonely place and you get found out. You come up short if you've ever tried to have you <laughs> will be found out yeah it's the most honest there's nowhere yeah. to hide it's no. an honest honest yeah. it's an honest sport yeah it's, it's like the most honest conversation you can have and everyone gets to see it and you see and they see who you are and that's why the shame is so bad when you get knocked out when you get beat the shame is so bad because they all seen who you was you know what i mean lying on your back looking. but that's it's like have you ever seen the um, palm the man in the arena have a look at the man in the arena, we'll pull it up. The man in the arena is boss lad. If you read that poem, couldn't recite it to you now. But basically it's like it's saying about all the people who are onlookers and stuff, never yeah. ever know how it feels. So yeah, sometimes it's it, you sit there thinking to yeah. yourself, it's a shame, but you shouldn't feel shame like I you should, that, should like, feel yeah. proud. Because there's yeah. not many people who do what you do, and it's easy to sit there and point the finger and say, but try and do it have a go yeah. and then come back and tell me and I'll take it from if, if I was to get stopped or knocked out if you'd be knocked out and you said to me fucking hell Jack and you buzzed off it I'd go yeah fair enough but if you never even got in there don't talk to me about it because you yeah. can't judge me because yeah. you haven't been there do you know what I mean I and, do get that like yeah but I know what you're yeah. saying Jazz. you want to be number one and yeah. it's the drive to be get, number one do I still get pride by saying I had to go you never it doesn't give you no self weight does it it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't no but you can't point the finger. I know what you mean. You just want to, yeah. you be want to be number one and that's it. Yeah. And it's a bit of pills to swallow when you're not. Yeah. We'll move on because this is a little bit like the last sort of the sour bit. Kid Gala had two. Yeah. How did you feel when that first came in? Just the talks and making that fight. When a fight comes like that, like, how did you feel at that time? Because there was a bit of needle, weren't there? And you, 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 it was fucking. I needed that same um, revenge. I just needed that. Bad, you know what I mean? Um, Had you dreamt about that goal? Yeah, I knew, I knew we'd fight again. I knew we'd fight again for the world title. But this we, time it was different. It was for the world I title, not a British. He got collared in the first steroids, and he, he, I thought, would he ever fight again? Will I? When he, when I heard he got pushed over steroids after the first time we fought, I thought, will it ever come again? Selfishly for me, will I? Will that fight ever come again? Never thought. Not on a bar, I just thought, will I ever get my revenge? You know what I mean? How was it a bar, me? You just make it a bar, you sometimes don't even win a bar, me. Yeah. He was um, after the Ryan Ball fight, was, which was in um, lockdown. We That was for the WBO, I think WBO European. So I was ranked number two with the IB, number two or three with the IBF, mandatory anyway, and number one mandatory for the WBO it was Navarrete or Galad. So we had options because the chosen one or the other. Yeah, but you were you there was couldn't, never an option. Couldn't let it go. Couldn't, there weren't an couldn't. option, was the lad. It was you you had to find out, didn't you? You needed to know the answer. At one point the options um it, it outweighed the benefits of fighting Navaretti outweighed Galad big time. But you personally And we went that way and we made the choice remember I remember sitting on the bug once again. <laughs> sitting on the bug and going to my bed. You smelling me having a shite there and all that <laughs> looking in bed and said doesn't feel right. It just doesn't feel right. Did you feel like it was the cowardly move, Jazz, to you? 
Yeah, although it weren't, it was, know, the, it was the smart move. move. Yeah, it was it, the right yeah, business move. But, but this still, is where your ego creeps in, yeah, and you ego. just go, yeah. "I can't have this. I've got yeah. this. I've got this opportunity. Yeah. I've got to take it because it doesn't sit right with your soul, lad." Something else came along to make the the Galatia fight a little bit better from our side of point of view, but it was nowhere near as good as the other option. I mean, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. Because you, know you were you were to justify it, yeah. in any yeah. which way you you, you wanted, you could. Yeah. And I lost. And you got in there. Yeah. How did it feel when you were in there, Josh? I gave them all. Um, Georgie, it, with Georgie and Derry, the ride we had was just fucking so good. Um, when I met George. George Vaughan. Mickey, what, a, what, yeah. what a coach, lad. What, what, a, what, a, man. what a man boxing. Never met a man like him. He's just fucking integral. Um, just a proper boxing coach. And when the role we had... The confidence that we had going into it, in my mind, there was no way we can lose. It meant to be, Georgie Vaughan never, he won the WBU titles, but he'd never won one of the four recognised world titles. Like, um, it was just meant to be. And um, I just thought it was meant to be. I think I went a bit, I, I don't know everything good, like, and we went back and trained with Franny and Jim for that fight and we came full circle back in Liverpool, love being at home. And two days a week in Franny, it was good. Um, great camp. Um, got a torn peck in the camp. Sparring, fucking sparring. And, um, sparring was from bad. And I was thinking, what do you fucking keep? Is he doing that peck? But you kept missing my head. Hit me down there and whack me in the peck. And it ripped me peck. It was about five weeks before the fight. And I couldn't lean. So my strength condition suffered. But it didn't, it didn't do nothing to me mentally. Because it was meant to be, it was meant to win. Yeah, regardless. Yeah, it was just. I'm happened. not asked. Yeah. Anything could have happened. Yeah. You, you were, you were, you were on that one way road to, to getting in there, lad, weren't yeah. you? And 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 we fought, and um, it didn't go our way. He ended up boxing me. We got a cut early on, in the fight in that clash. It was, and he worked, he worked on that eye. He's accurate, and um, every time he hit me, I could just fucking feel it. He had a pair of flies. I could feel his knuckles to the flies. <sighs> And um, my eye was going. At one point, he hit me, and I felt like remember Mario gets the mushroom. He goes, bum, 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 bum. "That's what my eye just went." Bum, 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 bum. And I felt. I remember thinking in the fight, "Oh, Mario!" <laughs> I was like, "Mario!" <laughs> and, and my eye closed. In the end of the fight, I couldn't see nothing. I don't think people. Well, obviously, by looking at the performance, you can from put two and two. Ah, can you even see it? But I could. It was like I was squint my eyes. Put your glasses back on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was like my glasses had come off. I, cou I couldn't see that. You know what I mean? And I could feel punches hitting me. You had moments as well where you come back into it. There was one way, like you dance around and bang, bang, bang. You put like a, 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 an array, a little yeah. array of shots together. And it was lovely, lad. And like, you really didn't. Again, like for me, just like to come back from these losses, I think it's what makes a fighter. And you are a real fighter. You've boxed the best and you've been around the best. And. What strikes me with you, lad, is your character. You've you, you've got a big character, and like even like after it, seeing you with your lad with the apples on his eyes and all, <laughs> all that, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, you go home to your kids, something yeah. And I can remember thinking in the fight, it's fucking. You no, know, when you you're not willing to you're not willing to lose, so you're willing for any other outcome. And I can remember sitting with my kids thinking, I'd have fucking just, I'd have to give, I'd have to give anything. To win. to win that fight even if it cost me fucking life or one you sitting with your kids after it. I've got to have that mentality but you've also got to fucking got to be the, realistic and it's hard though when it's just when yeah. you want something so bad yeah. you just do anything to get it I told my babe before we had the, the, the kids and she had a lad when I met her so we've got three but I said look we boxing before then you know what I mean and whatever will be will be and she accepted that so we even so even now I have to keep my mentality strong and have to be have to be a fighter number one until I'm not. Yeah, it's a selfish sport, isn't it, yeah. Jazz? So if I'm never that that person, if I ever go into a fight thinking I don't want to, don't want to um, get it, yeah. scared. Yeah. When I say goodbye to them now, though, when when you leave the house to fight, I, I say goodbye now. But what is you? Yeah. I say, like, I yeah. say goodbye. Bye, yeah. As I mean, like a go goodbye. Goodbye. You know what I mean, I, I really mean it. Like I might see you because some fighters don't really. And as a kid, you don't understand that, but some fighters actually do. I can honestly relate to that because the level I'm boxing, I, not unlike you, the last bout I had when I went outside, it was in, I think it was in November time. I said to me, Mrs. and that, 
like I don't like going to box now when I've got kids because like I'm saying to that the kids at the door and like I'm going to get in my car lad, and like you don't know you, some yeah. fight you don't come back do you know what I mean yeah. but it can alter your life it, and it can yeah. change your life and it can motivate it as well can it because yeah. you say I'm, I'm getting home to them tonight 100% yeah you're getting in there and that it sort of goes away lad you get to the end of the road and it goes away you fucking you focus then yeah. you're thinking about what yeah, you're yeah. doing but you're in that time you know, it's a big, it's a massive commitment in it, just for, for who you are and what you're doing. You're putting your life under the, yeah. your life at risk. But you know what's strange? When you go sparring, it's a fucking risk, lad, but you just don't see it like that, do you? You just get there and you turn up and you spar and you go through the motions and some spars are harder than fights. Yeah. People like pay it. to watch that sparring. People are like, oh yeah, he's only sparring. Fuck. Lad, there's some heavy spars, isn't there? You know, we do it and make it seem normal. People think it's just fucking normal. Don't they? Out of house sparring, where they bring someone down, or you go down to someone else's gym, and it's that. on, isn't it? It's on. it's on, it's on, it's the unwritten rule. Yeah. And that, uh, when it's damages, what does he weigh? 67, so he's 71. <laughs> go on, then put him in. How many he had? <laughs> Seven, so he's had 10. All right, yeah, we'll put our lad in. Everyone's <laughs> lying about the weight. <laughs> <laughs> you look up all right, I'm about you know, when you're lying about your weight, you start with a bow, yeah, bow, yeah, bow, yeah. Who would you say the best people you share the ring with or the best person? It could be sparring, it could be fighting, it could be anything. Um, I sparred a fella called, do you remember a fella called uh, Dennis Mendes? No. He was, I think he was something like super featherweight. When I was super bantamweight, he was super featherweight, IBO, IBF world champion. He was a good fighter, I sparred him. Like, um, done, a f- done a few rounds with um, was it Yorkers or Yori Gamboa. Yori Gamboa, Yori Scobar or whatever, yeah. He was in Miami, he was a good fighter. They're, they're a different level, aren't they? The Americans, lad, and the setup's different, isn't it? Oh, the Cubans in America, though. No. What I realised, they're watching some boxing this morning, no, the Cubans, mm-hmm. um, Frankie Gavin against the Cubans, I was watching on, on, on YouTube when I was running this morning. Um, and what I realised is that what i seen in America, people think the boxing... So when two Cubans spar in America and they're from different gyms, they don't they don't spar as pros anymore. They go back to four twos amateurs mm. and you just go for it. Like for three rounds maximum. I went to, great to watch. I went to Gleason's gym when I was in New York last year with me missus, or I think it was the year before, and uh, it trained there. I went there just to have a little look and Hector Rocha was in there. God rest the soul, he died a few months ago. And lad... Same 13 world champions, Zab Judah, loads of great fighters. And he was just dead humble, dead down to earth. And he showed me around the gym and he said, you box? And I said, yeah. He said, do you want to come and train tomorrow? And I went, yes, yeah, six o'clock, lad, in the morning. And I got up and got the <laughs> tram across for her and from the other side of New York <laughs> to, bro- like to prove him what he's doing. Yeah. yeah, But I'm not a ass, lad. I'm just, this is my holiday. Get there. And lad, he was man of his word. He was there. I was on the steps in the morning time. And he, he was like, yeah, yeah. And I remember I had two bottles of water lad and in a carrier bag yeah i want a banana <laughs> and he was like hey, where's your gym bag and i was like is this is it lad? i never had one you know what I mean? carrier bag yeah. a quickie bag or a suitcase so he went go in the changing rooms and get changed and i was like and i think he just wants it and I, I went this is me bag he went just go in the changing rooms and i think he wanted me to have the experience and lad when you went in the changing rooms it was all the lockers right the way around the room and all the fighters had like stickers on the lockers they had their own lockers and that it was one of them where you got all the feels and i was like yeah this is this is serious and then he wrapped me hands and like he'd fold all the wraps before he'd wrapped them and even how he wrapped your hands and that was sick lad it was a boss boss experience head of hardy was in there at the time she was hitting pads and um he, 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 just, he just trained me lad for about an hour and a half and it was like it was different it, it was like on on like um the fucking you know like the paddles and all that and then it was like little bits of tech work and then he'd have you on the bag and work it again and when every time you'd throw a shot if you'd lean in or whatever it's ah it didn't make no sense it make no sense <laughs> and if you threw a decent money say that makes sense you know what i mean and there was there was there was there was, there was two max points of the story was there was two like mexican lads who were a little bit lighter than me who were there at the time and uh, no, there was three, sorry, two in the ring and one out and that. And he was messing with me, saying about a spar. And I said, I'll spar all fucking three of them. And then he was yeah, joking, yeah. elite, elite kids. And um, the sparring, pff, I've seen like you better than some fights. Yeah, and like, that was it, four twos, bam, 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 killing each other. You go sparring. Um, but the way these box, the way hard these box as well, Jazz, not everything was hard. It'd be like tap, tap, tap. You'd be thinking to yourself, and then bang, I don't know where that'd be hard shots, you know what I mean? And that. But just the whole experience on it, on, on, on its own and that. I come back and didn't shut up Carmen was talking about like fucking yeah. Broadway shows and helicopters and all that. I was just like, oh, <laughs> it was boss yeah. experience. 
But the level out there, it's it's the, the next level, aren't they? Like, when you go across there, it's a, dif- it's a different it's world. It's a different level. It's different. It's just different, isn't it? There's a lot of sparring and stuff, isn't it? I think a lot of fighters grow in that experience of sparring. 100%. Just a lot more fucking But cushion. I just feel like the, over here, we think we can box till you get on a plane. And, and, and then a lot a lot of us get found out. I'm not saying there's, they're not elite over here, but when you, when you box the top fighters over there, the, a lot of a, a lot of time we come That's up. That's why I travelled to to Ireland, for Peter Taylor, for the for the uh, fundamentals, technical fundamentals. Peter Taylor is Peter Taylor your coach, couldn't you know? Yeah, and Derry. So I, I went out. I went out. So when Georgie Vaughan retired after a fight, we didn't win the world title. Um, I went over to Dublin. Then I had a look around and went went to Dublin with Peter Taylor. Did you? Is that when Georgie said that's it? Georgie retired. Yeah. George, that was Georgie's last fight. That's why he wanted to win it so much. Bad. It was meant to be and all that. You know what I mean? Your relationship with Georgie Vaughan, let's just touch on it quickly, Jazz. Yeah. What was Georgie like? <laughs> As a coach. Like, I've heard people say, like, he'd be on Everton Hills before you. Yeah. He'd be waiting for you when you turn up, lad, and stuff like that. Like, he's like your Rocky type of coach. Like, he's like a Mickey, any. That's what you'd imagine, like, you know, yeah, like, yeah. like as, a, as a kid or whatever. Like, if you said to me from the outside looking in, a boxing coach, that's what you picture. Yeah. Sure. Was he that? That and more. I can't, like, it's hard to talk about him, like, without, you have to know, you know what I mean? If you know, you know, but it's just like, he's some man, you know what I mean? Just integral. So, like, after, 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 after a fight, you'll have a conversation with a coach. And it's quite awkward because it's, it's about money, payment. And now you've got to pay your coach. And for me, it's always awkward, you know what I mean? Mm. Georgie Vaughan's the type of man, after I, after I thought we had our biggest payday, he was like, Georgie, I don't want don't nothing. Don't talk about that. I don't want nothing. Do something for the kids. George, fuck off, this is your wages. We've worked for this for years, you know what I mean? But that's, <laughs> that's what type of fella he is. He just integrally does it for um, for doing its sake, you know what I mean? He's got real integrity. For what he, for what he does, yeah. He's yeah. just a boxing man, a real yeah. boxing man, you know what I mean? The old school. One, one loved of the, the bones of him. I was with him last night. I loved the bones of him. Yeah. Some man, weren't he? He won him. Um, uh, he got an award, didn't he? Yeah. British Boxing Board of Control Award, yeah. like lifetime achievements or something like that. Big yeah. fucking plaque thing, yeah. and uh, deserved every fucking bit of yeah. it as well. And more. Me and Daddy gave it to him on the um, the show. Then me and the um, infusion was that in the Grand Central. Oh, Grand Central. Yeah, the show, yeah. Boss, and like that's a blag him to come and watch the show to get to, to give him the yeah. award. But I mean, like, probably there's not you, many you, like you that left around. You wouldn't have took it. No, probably yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't turn up. up. If, he knew, if he knew he was going to get it, I mean, that's the type man. of fella it is, yeah. Mm. But as well, like, just to have that experience, you haven't saved the same with Adam as a head coach, and, you know, you and Derry giving him that and that. It's just history in itself, innit? You know what I mean? Well, well, well I, watched, I watched him and Derry tonight boxing together, and then years later, I'm on the hills watching him and Derry together, walking some, as I'm running up or running down, I can see him and Derry together. So, and mostly Georgie on his own, but then... When Daddy was there, he was like, man, that would come full circle yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, so special, special man. So I went away to Peter to come and I missed Daddy because Daddy was Georgie's number two. Mm. So I went went to Peter and now I've asked Peter, would he be all right with Daddy being his number two? Because I missed Daddy big time when I come home and he said, yeah, so Daddy's a big part of me, massive part of me. You know what I mean? so Anyone I'm, I'm who's happy. watching Peter Taylor's case, he's dead, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, fantastic coach, brilliant technical coach, brilliant. Athlete. Do you know when you're over in Ireland? Is Katie ever around? I've met her, I met her once, just met her once. She lives in America, doesn't she? I, th- I don't think she can. Have. She's too. She can't move. You know what I mean? She cannot move. She can't. She can't go for a cup of coffee or not like that. Crazy. Without yeah. having a cup, without like twenty pictures or what? She's a star and she's a mega Superstar. star. Probably, Superstar. Probably same as like um, Conor McGregor or Stephen Gerrard and stuff. Like that. They're not gonna go to. Cost her Addy, you know what no, I mean? They're not going to go to normal coffee shops and stuff. Sad, really. Sad to see, you know what I mean? You live in hiding. You hiding if you want to go somewhere. It can be too much, can't yeah, it, Josh? Yeah. It can. Like, people yeah. don't see that side of things. She, but she would never go on about it, I don't know what I mean? Because she she's, loves, yeah, she's, she's an humble person. She loves I've seen her. She's always giving time to people yeah. and all that. Especially like young girls and that's you getting yeah. photos with them and all like, oh, right. <laughs> what you do you don't stand murder with your bed and you fucking storm out the other something else getting a picture of me and <laughs> Yeah, it must be difficult. Do people ever ask you for pictures in that jazz or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, it's just it is what it is, it's fucking great, isn't it? Especially, you know, especially it. when it's a kid, you know what I mean? Yeah. When it's a kid. Because you, you not only get a chance to get the picture and be nice, blah blah blah, good, good interaction with the laugh, but there's a chance to show the little fella. If you ever 
when you grow how, how it's a cycle. This you, is what you, you can become. Can, you and you can you can um, be nice to everyone. If that means you can be nice to everyone, and it's just a generation of people comes being back. Nice yeah, yeah, to because them. yeah, uh, yeah, because you give him your time and stuff. I've seen you like giving the kids the trophy at the forty and all that, and it's fucking it's boss lad. It's just boss. You're, it's, you're a good man. It can be good uncomfortable. Person. Uncomfortable. Like they say with the fucking um, the sort of. Oh my, <laughs> who am I? You're asking me, you know, why are you asking me? One of them, you feel like that, but then if you're in that position, yeah, you've go got to do it, you just go yeah. and do it, yeah, go for it. That's and, a nice lad, lap, lap it up, time, yeah, yeah, of course, and enjoy it as well. While if you, you can, can be a good, good, good example, you know, good role model. Peter Taylor, when he's coaching you, when you're training with him, what's it like, Taz? Good, very good, yeah, is he I, technical? Yeah, very, very technical. Everything's fundamentals of like, um. Everything's attached to the force your rotation, you know, where your elbow should be, where your shoulder should be, where your chin should be when you land, on your point of contact, you, you get getting out. Getting out's very, very, very yeah. important, isn't it? Yeah. It's all right getting in, but if you come out in a mad way or you're coming out with your head in the air and all that, you get, I used to yeah. get, like, a Paul Eddie, you fucking do all the hard work and you're coming yeah. out with your head up in the air all the time. Yeah. And the, well, Kevin Smith was the same, I think he left an impression on the Sully as well, Kevin Smith, of this technical fundamentals. Mm. No, like um, do you turn the elbow high and stuff like that? Mm. Yeah, it's important though, isn't it? Because if you get them fundamentals like, and in a fight, it doesn't always like map out like that. You might throw something short, or you might turn your hand over, and you still hurt people and whatever. But it's if you're just getting them fundamentals, drilling them, drilling them, drilling them, it becomes second nature, and then yeah. you just operate like that when you're and in there. Happens. Don't whoa, yeah, it's fine. That out of nowhere, yeah. 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 Just it just come out of nowhere because yeah. you've done it that many. Yeah. Many ta- good habits and bad habits as well, that is. Yeah, they, they, yeah. Both, they both... Um, predictability as well, yeah. Very, very predictable, <laughs> lad. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, let's talk about the big one. You finally got it. You won a world title in front of your own cloud at the Olympia on the 15th of October 2022 against the Lerato de la Mani. Yep. What was that like, Josh? Can you try and put that into words for me? When you got crowned world title... What you've been waiting your whole fucking life for? Try and put that into words. Realization, I'd, I'd come through as I'm like getting my arm lifted and looking at the belt going on. It's like I have to turn around here because in the visualization, it went like this. I have to look at the clouds for turn around with the belt on me and see all the cloud. Everyone's there. There's a good few people in there, by the way. On that night, it was rammed in there. When the Olympia is rammed, it's amazing. And what a venue! Yeah, when it's full, it's something else in it. <sighs> Sick venue, lad. And it was. Special, really, because... Your career had went full circle because you had your yeah. debut in there. Yeah. And you've won a world title in there. Yeah. What does the Olympia mean to Jazza Dickens? Yeah, it's great, but I've won. But I've built in there. <laughs> in, 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 <laughs> love it. In there, lads, it's fucking boss because... Like, Do you never drive past there, Jazz? Or walk past there and just look up at it and just be like, wow, have you ever had that moment? Sometimes, yeah. When I've got a fight coming up in there, when I'm going back there, I go, yes, we're going to be in there. Or wherever a fight, if it's in the Echo, the, the MS now will drive past the. Do you ever, ever go to like any, any events or there's something different other than boxing in them type of places? And like you've seen, you see, yeah, oh, that box, but I can't, but I can't, um, you're watching Jake Bug play, boxing. yeah, you're watching Jake Bug fucking playing, and you're fucking <laughs> getting yeah. all butterflies thinking, I uh, my hands wrapped, yeah, you can't <laughs> think of nothing but boxing. Yeah. Yeah. It's mad seeing it, it's mad seeing the stage, you know, where someone's singing, where they yeah. should be yeah. Yeah. boxing, boxing, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's like fucking, yeah, I know, yeah. You, I know exactly what you mean. I always drive past the old park ballroom, anyone, my, my kids, when I go past the old park ballroom, the car, my kids go, oh. It it's true, yeah. The Olympia is some venue. I remember him um, asked a dog boxing in there years ago, lad, like when he just very first sort of to come on the scene and he had loads of fucking lot big car from Birk and yeah. he was all jumping up and down and that and it was just like the atmosphere was it was bouncing and I was like, Yeah. I remember some fellas in there going mad on the first balcony and the balcony fell. Fell through, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking fell off the balcony and broke my leg. And it was the last fight, never just walked out and people walking over him. <laughs> all right, lad, you're all right, lad. No one's asked. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. So you got your hand raised, and how did that feel, Josh? Can you put it into words? Can you try? Special, lad, special, very special because you always said that, like, for it to be, because when you win something, you go home, and the night of a professional fight, you, 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 one minute. 10 o'clock, you're in the ring, you're fighting, everyone's cheering. Two hours later, you're sitting on your own with your beard, 
in a pizza. Or a loved one, if you're lucky enough. Or you're sitting on your own, literally on your own. You know what I mean? And there's no sound. And it's like, oh my God, that was such an eye, but I'm sitting on my own. And that's the reality of professional sports or entertainment, anything like that. That's why you see these people with after parties and um, their entourage, because they don't want to end, you know what I mean? Cause it's a come down, down isn't it? Yeah. Even a few days later. It's a like, massive come down, even, that's what I felt. Even if you win a fight, Jazz, and it's just a fucking normal fight, yeah. the next day when you're in five guys or whatever, yeah. it's like you're still buzzing off it. It's still like there's an adrenaline rush there too, yeah. in the way that you're like, still yeah. alive, aren't you? Oh, yeah. The flame's and still lit, still, isn't it? 100%. Yeah. 100% even like sparring completely different but if you go home it's been like hard sparring you, it's hard to settle because you've got like a bit of an adrenaline rush yeah. and that you'll eat and that you'll be, you'll be lying there and you're like still a bit awake and that it's like yeah. you can't shut off from sparring it sparring days are different aren't they mm-hmm. yeah. but when you when you when you box the, the, the feeling itself again is just completely different it's it's a bit sad really because what happens is after it you're on your own if you committed if you committed to the sport like and you and you're dedicated yeah you're on you your own, own and you're sitting there and it's just like what now you know what I mean you wake What's up next? the next morning you're not supposed to go to, for, on the hills you're not supposed to go running you're not supposed to go to the gym you're supposed to rest you get told now of a week off and you're thinking what do you want me to do what am I supposed to do you know what I mean Obviously, you got kids and a family, and you've what? got you've got to, you've got to learn yourself to be a dad again and a partner again. What would you do after boxing, Josh? When it's all said and done, whether yeah. that be fucking ten years, twenty years, tomorrow, whatever, what would you do after boxing, or have you got a plan? Because a lot of people are lost, lad, and with without it, and with you being in and around it from fucking thirteen to now, you've been in the sport twenty years. Yeah. It's your life, it's your whole yeah. life. Have you, has them thoughts ever crossed your mind? No, or can't no, you no. think like I, that whilst best. you're actively no. fighting? You can't. I've had five losses that last fight, like I fucking haven't touched on it, nothing like that. But I fucked up the weight big time. I, I took the knock. I had just like a fucking dodge, like a fucking stroke or something. The ambulance came out as I was making the weight in the street, halfway through the weight cut. After that, still had half a stone to go. I had to ball. This is your last bout, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, when I got knocked After out. the world title, you've, yeah, you've, you've had one fight. Yeah, first defense. I walked for eight hours. Sweat teeth in because it's hot. So that's how I had to get the weight up. Couldn't get me game, couldn't get me a sweat on back again because I thought if I, my heart rate goes up, I'll take the knock and rather I'm going to come back, back out again. And, and you're thinking, I don't want to, I'm not fucking dying to make the weight because that's where I was. I thought I was going to die. What weight did you have to make, Josh? 57 kilo. And what weight were you? Fucking hell. Too heavy. Honestly. Too heavy. <laughs> Tell me this close, that little yeah. shake the mic exclusive. Like, <laughs> what it was minute, it? Like? <laughs> tell you a minute. Tell you a minute. When the boxing balls are control aren't listening. <laughs> so the ambulance came out in the street. They had to phone an ambulance because it was fucking sick. I'd, I'd see. I don't know if anyone's had this live. <laughs> Come put in the fucking comments. What happened to me? But my whole body seized up, crippled up. I held my hands and I couldn't move. I was just seized. And, oh. and I come up to my neck and I went to my dad, I think I'm having a stroke. <laughs> and I just said it, lad. I just wanted to say, I think I'm having a stroke. My, my mouth went. And I went, I'm fucking definitely having a stroke. And I was fucking so, so chucked the knock, I couldn't stand up and hit the floor. The ambulance came out. So I drank up in this shop and this fucking coffee developed probably thinking, oh, I'm just trying, just trying to run my business and he's taking the knock. <laughs> he's tying in my coffee. <laughs> Thanks for the fella, like, it fucking helped me out a lot. So I drank, I drank up, must have drank about two litres, and after they had half a stone to go, after the ambulance went to say, am I all right? After they took, the, what's it called, is it ECGs are called? Yeah, yeah, like a heart scan type after, of thing. Yeah, after they took all that off me, and tested me, they said, you're all right. I think it must have been a severe dehydration or what, I don't know. And then I got weighed and he had half a stone to go at that point. Wow. And so I just, I couldn't get my heart rate up because I knew I'd took the knock and I'm thinking, I'm not dying, I'm not dying to keep me belt. Because it's pointless. That's what I was saying. It's pointless to die. You're not keeping the belt for you to die. So I just walk for eight hours. That's what I done. Walk for it all night. My arm floor walk with me all night. And um, I just sweat two times. And I just got the weight off somehow. Up. Um, just thought over there and, uh, and um, just about me to cut the scales and I couldn't see fuck all. Was your dad? I was so girl. close to falling over because I couldn't see fuck all. Everything was going in out of blur, not like a, a static telly. But what has happened previously, you think you've got more time than you have. I hadn't fought for eight months when I got on the Texas scan of a car 11. He said, what have you been doing differently? I said, just training car, why? And he said, because you've been inactive, you've gained four pounds of muscle. So I was just putting muscle on, just training normal. But sparring every lad, when you spar every lad, you need to put a bit of weight on, you need to keep up mm. with them. And um, so I gained too much weight, mass-wise as well as fat. And then 
12 week camps just not enough time to get it off you know what I mean and killing and yourself too you think enough. you got 12 weeks to get it off and you can't so everything got it with like my brain was just like a fucking in a cardboard box just getting rattled around you're scared going into a fight or not scared but your mindset's not in the right place just when you're walking to a ring like that obviously it's the day before when you've got time to rehydrate but, but listen I seen a nutritionist a few weeks ago saying like basically you've trained so hard for a fight I see athletes putting like major work in an eight week camp. They've run, they've done everything, and they fucking throw it all away yeah. like fucking 48 hours before yeah. because you deplete your body that much. Yeah. And then it's like you may as well have not run, you yeah. may as well have not done all that yeah. work because yeah. you, what you built, you've just dismantled, and then you're stepping yeah. in the ring. Yeah. You, it's backward what, yeah. what fighters are doing. Yeah. And he was saying, like, and if you do deplete yourself that much, in 24 hours, you physically cannot put back what you've taken. Yeah. There's no fucking way. Yeah. So when you're going into that ring, you're, ne- you're only going to be a shadow of what you was last week yeah. or, or 48 hours ago. Yeah. I paid, so, paid the price. I paid the price big time. Got knocked out tonight. Mm-hmm. Knocked, out, knocked out cold. Put me out on the ring. <laughs> How long have I been out if you're standing there? <laughs> <you know what? laughs> Just... When I said to me, I have left. I've been knocked out. Went, yeah, I said, off him. <laughs> but fucking wounded. But this one, it was like, I know that, I know why. You know what I mean? I've moved up. Wait, I messaged the IBO the other day and said that I had a contact clause for the rematch with him. And I messaged the IBO, letting him, but don't want to fuck him around. I just said, look, mate, I can't. I can't. Go on with your career. I can't make the wait anymore. If we meet again, we meet again. But. For now, that's it for me. For the, for I think the, that's gonna, I think that's gonna do you so much justice, and I think you're gonna you're gonna grow so much from there, Jazz, because it's just acceptance. You're putting yourself in a place in a position where you're just like, all right, Sam, you might have to box every lads, and that's that that's one thing in itself. But at least you're gonna be all you when you're in there, and I think you'd be more focused, and yeah. you can focus on your own career now instead of trying to hang around him and trying to fucking linger on to something and, yeah. and proper kill yourself to try and make something that's fucking very very hard to do and yeah. make yourself miserable in the process. If so anyone doesn't know, making weight's fucking horrible as it is, and if you it, it doesn't the sport doesn't need to be even harder than what it already yeah. is, does it? No. I'm happy I've moved up. That's what I'm going to do super fair away now. So, what does the future look like for you, Jazz? What 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 are your immediate plans now? I know you're going to Ireland, aren't you? Um, yeah, going to Ireland on Sunday, Sunday night, and I'm going to um, fight on the 30th of March in Malta on a um, fight zone card. Stephen Vaughan. And, uh, Is the opponent confirmed yet or no? Not yet. Just want to be to see where we're at. Super fair away. It's going to be another name to get in it. Aren't we've you? also got a fight to. I think it's two months later as well, and that'll be to get into a ranking, a ranking title at super featherweight. So I'll be back, be back on the horse. You know what I mean, I've just been waiting, waiting a, a good while to to get confirmation of promoters and stuff like that. My promotional company, but was with, they just fell through. Didn't know what was going on, so I just sort of took the bull by the on some self managed now, and I want to. Yeah, you've yeah. changed a few things, haven't you? You're starting yeah. to manage yourself and stuff yeah. like that. Obviously, now as well, you've changed your team because you've got Peter Taylor, but now you've got Derry Matthews yeah. on board as well. Yeah. You know, um, what's the end goal? The future end goal is another world title. World title, yeah. That's, 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 that's the plan, yeah. And I'm not, no, I'm in the best position. Obviously, you have to prove it after losing like that. People just gonna assume the worst, aren't they? He's finished. I, I, just I, the way I, it is, but I know I'm in the better position that's that I've ever been. I know I'm better now than I've ever been. It's just down to me now to prove it. It's just <laughs> getting someone to be behind you to to give you the platform to show him. That's really I believe it, Jazz, and you know what? Like, it's only it's only the fighters themselves who know. You get low, like you, you you know you see a dickhead in the fucking in, in the mason. Oh, he's washed up. Oh, yeah, he's over the hill. Blah blah blah. Yeah. A lot of these people don't yeah. fucking know nothing about fuck all. Yeah. Don't know their ass all. What you know about boxing, lad? What you don't know, you probably write on the yeah. back of a stamp. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, you've forgot more than what these no, people know. So I don't even profess to be the fucking expert. You know what I mean? I just know. I just know. But you've got a lot of experience. You've been around for twenty years, so you know what what you've got left, and you know where you you go on, and it's and it's great to have have a vision in it. And I think we we all need a vision. Yeah. Um, you started that question. What are you gonna do next, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but you don't know what you're gonna do next, no, well, do you? I've got all the stuff lined up because, like, in business and properties and stuff like that. Where Is that what you're getting into? Just it just fucking burns my head up. Nothing with unboxing excites me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Do you think you might end up becoming a coach? Maybe a manager? Who knows? Um, 
Dog coach. Is that a walking dog? I'm so can beat you for a weekend, but I don't know. I don't know where I don't know where it ends up in the ride, you know what I mean? Maybe I'll start thinking about it. I don't know. But but anything goes on boxing is an exciting so yeah, I'm, so not the, so I'm not the boxing. best at anything else right now, you know what I mean? I've got other things that I have to do because I've committed to it and stuff like that. And I have to look after. But you family, don't enjoy it the same. No, it's just not the same. You gotta just do what you're enjoying, keep doing what you're enjoying, so you don't enjoy it anymore, innit? And then you'll f- find something new, something will find you. Yeah. Um, Josh in the community, can you tell us a bit about that? What a way yeah, of giving it's back, Josh. Fucking special, you know. It's so good. We need to get a new one. I'm waiting to to get me things out of the way because I want to be there myself. For anyone who doesn't know, who only follows you as a boxer, can you please tell us about Jazz in Jazz, the community? Jazz in the community is what we called it. But it's me and my alpha working with families of addiction. So people who've been through addiction with their children, a lot of the times it doesn't go the way we had it. Where it's like a lot of kids get taken away from the, the loved one, get to a certain point where the loved one need, hasn't got someone around them to help them as much and then they end up, or they're not as manageable. And they lose the kids or the kids go to live with a family member like a nana or an auntie or a sister or whatever. And... What happens is these people need to be in a working program of getting clean from from the substance abuse. But within that program, they have to um, get to know the family again. So when people get clean, they, they expect a pat on the back. That's what I've found through my experience. A lot of people get clean now and they go, look, I'm clean. Look, everyone, look, family, I'm clean. But the family's saying, I know you're clean, but we don't trust you because now... We're just waiting for you to upset us again and, and, and fall again and, and we get it as the byproduct. So the family have got to earn the trust back with the the loved ones. And it takes a long time. Me and my alpha have been through that before. We understand exactly the process it was. And uh, they're all, the kids also getting to know a new person because they're used to this person. Who's on. When you're on substance abuse, so, so, so you're abusing yourself. So if you go out of a Saturday night and you're on the ale, you're a completely different person than you are Sunday morning. You're just night and day, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and that's who these kids are used to. They don't know the 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 person. It might be better because they because they're not just hurting themselves through substance, but they still don't know that person. Yeah, they know they know Saturday night, Monday not fucking yeah. Monday morning. Yeah, the conversation is different. The everything's just going to be different about the dynamics of how to live uh, as the family unit. It's just going to be totally different. I mean, it might be better, it might be worse. <laughs> they might not be having murder all the time, but they might be comfortable in that murder all the time because it's just their family. Because that's what dynamic. they're used to. Yeah. Mm. So they get to know the new person. I'm rambling here a bit, but no, it's a lot of this. Totally. Um, so one day a week they come in and they integrate like me and my alpha did because we wanted to but we give people an opportunity to come in one day a week and integrate back into the family unit it, it doesn't have to be a mum and dad there can be a son who's, a, who's, a, who's been on something and their ma coming in or someone with the kids it's a lot, it, mostly it's women with the kids um, that's what I found and most most people but it's great when we get a father in there with the lads and not two and they, they do physical activities the boxing they do the projects we work projects every week's different where do you do it Jazz? in Derry gym so um, we do the boxing side of it in Derry gym we get a speaker come in we've had good people Lee Butler's come in it helped us out Tony Bellews came in Molly McCann's came in John Mage came in some people come to um, to see some people with addictions who are now clean, who, who've been through the same process, come in and talk about how their relationships was. And we talk, and not only do we talk, we listen. So I, I hear it from the kids' point of view, and I get across to the adults, this is what they're talking about. If you can hear, you can hear it from me without the resentment, it's easier to understand. I'm yeah, I can tell the kids what's going on, because because they're not hearing the excuses from the ma. Does that make sense? So it's great, it's a great way. It's, it's, it's like they're talking to... I'm talking to little Jazza, my uncle is talking to himself, and they're talking back. It's like a mirror, you know what I mean? It's brilliant. <laughs> it's so mad what you've so, created, isn't it? Fucking boss. It's something I always had in my mind. This was like one of my end goals always throughout the years, because I used to think as a kid, as an only kid, I'd love to help someone like me now. Yeah, yeah. As a kid, you needed, you, needed you now, then. Yeah, exactly that, yeah. And um, so at the end of it, we go like we go out, we go bowling, or we, we do family activities and stuff like that, sports or whatever. It's just great, you know. It's brilliant, yeah. It's a brilliant little course. And if anybody amazing. like would like to reach out, jazz for like yeah. jazz in the community, or yeah. someone's like struggling like that, whether it be themselves or whether it be a loved one, how can they go about it, lad? The links will be on my um, social media. Just message me on on Instagram, which is Jazz Dickens Ten, and on the Jazz Dickens Ten, there's a link to 
I think it's up there. If not, I'll put it back up today. Just reminded me. Jazza in the community. The link is anyway. And um, you can just message me. And I'll and I get, and get back to you at some point. Sometimes I miss it. Don't take it personally if I don't get back. Cause I get a lot of messages. So, nice um, sometimes maybe just start a message with Jazz in the community and then yeah. I can open it. And oh, my dad is called Silky Colin Dolby on there. So you can get, get in touch with him. <laughs> the Silky That's fella. the nickname I give him. <laughs> with the Silky fella. Yeah. When we used to go, when, we, when he got clean, we used to play Silky Colin one day a week. That was our thing, Snoop one day a week. And he's Silky fucking Colin. good at this. I you Silky skills, haven't you? And, like, you're silky. and, he's, and he's, uh, people say to him, now, why do you call him Silky? And he goes, wouldn't, wouldn't you like to know? Just one shit nickname. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's special. You're also involved in weapon, weapons down, gloves up, gloves up, aren't you? Not yeah. really. Only peripherally, you know what I mean? Ah, yeah. I've only been there a few, a few times and just seen what they do. I think it's great. I have too. seen you get involved there, jo- told you. I've yeah. seen you on pictures and stuff like that. And yeah. just it, it is a great thing what they're doing in the community. Yeah. You know? I, w- I wouldn't put Sound myself to it because I haven't done nothing. I've only done yeah. t- turned up a few times, but I've seen Sound what they're doing. Sound of these away in the Amazing, yeah. yeah. And, and, and like a lot of things, it's substantial what they're giving to the kids. A lot of people just to fucking Instagram post or something they're not actually giving nothing back but they what they do is they actually get kids in work and and they're saying what they're doing they do aren't they know what I mean people people turn up kids they're getting the activities met they're getting a community a good a safe place and they're also getting a future and um yeah a program to go out to gardens and, yeah something to something to look to we touched on what the plan after is after boxing. Let's do a little uh, fast ten because I just like that little bit of fun on that. Or oh, last ten, last ten. And now the juicy jump under the desk. <laughs> <laughs> you got to walk an eye mouth. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, little mix up here. A few, few questions here. Favorite footballer of all time? Only pick one. Beans. Childhood life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> The old Ronaldo to us, he's different, isn't he? No, he can't talk Ronaldo. No, you don't know. You don't know the real Ronaldo. No, yeah, Yeah. you don't know the real Baines. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) If you could have dinner with, (laughs) if you could have dinner with any three people, dead or alive, who would they be? Can be anyone, Jazz. Can you prefer them dead? (laughs) <laughs> what if the dead stuff better? <laughs> um, if the dead, they won't eat much, so you'll be all right. You'll have yeah. all the desserts. <laughs> um, <laughs> Any three? It's good one, huh? Stump, stump me, yeah. Uh, I'm going to prepare for this. <laughs> I love that. Not predictable. Can he be in character? <laughs> Yours are users, one of them. Yeah. Is, that, is that a chicken? I like chicken. <laughs> I want that. Have you seen Yossi Hughes from the boys in the black stuff? Yossi Hughes. Yossi Hughes. Did the job. Yossi Hughes. Um, Yossi Hughes, Jobby Boswell from Bread. And um, <coughs> Jimmy Corkill. Jimmy. And, and he's got to be in double, <laughs> du- double dead. <laughs> Under the Millennium <laughs> March. <laughs> 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 Read the book or watch the telly. Just add it. I'd rather read the book. I don't do none of me. Only watch you do me. What a be? I didn't have you down as a reader. Just what? What a be? Go to karaoke song. <laughs> so it's real, maybe. What a tune like Peter Gabriel. You all had a little war hot tingling in it. Um, favorite fighter ever, ever. Marvelous, marvelous. Um, if you could master one skill overnight, what would it be? Spanish. You've been trying to learn for about seven years. <laughs> well, uh, what's your um, guilty pleasure TV show? Um, <clears throat> do you love bread? Have you seen bread? Bread, yeah. Bread. Old school. Do you watch Go Ahead? Go Ahead. Go Ahead. The new I, thing. I haven't really seen good, it, you know? but I've seen it advertised. It's like the Scouts Yeah, good, yeah good. I've seen it. Some it looks all right. Them. I've only yeah. seen little bits though. I need to have a, I need to have a look. I need to have a watch. Um, you're nearly bird or a night owl? Night owl. What's your favourite country food? Uh, nowadays. Back in the day, it was Happy Hip Holes. <laughs> was it? Yeah. I was telling Happy Hip Holes, lad. What, what about now? Chicken. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> salt. Salt on me chicken. Eels or flats, air up or down. 
<lacht> If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Um. Kind. Make everyone. I can make you kind. Sick. That's the boss answer, Jazz. You can make everybody kind. Yeah. You want to share kindness. Before we go, would you like to do a shout out to anyone? It could be a sponsor. It could be people who've invested time into you, your loved ones. Is there anyone you'd like to do a shout out to? Everyone. They know who they are. You know what I mean? And there's too many to... And then you're like leaving people out. People out. Yeah, so everyone who knows what they've done for me, whether it's tiny or a lot. I mean, because I'm not where I am to myself alone and everyone knows. Jaja Dickens, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for sharing the studio with me. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a fucking scream as well. You're a belter and the very best of luck for the future. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother.